Hello and welcome here to Newtown Shandrum GA Club. I'm Mick Lenehan. I'm joined here by Cork Masters Manager uh, Sean Horgan. Sean, look what an afternoon here for it. I can't get any better than it to be fair. Spectacular day for, for a game of hurling, for Masters hurling. It's the first match of Masters hurling in history. So, you know, great day, great venue, real hurling country. So it's great to see Cork and Limerick out today. And we couldn't ask for any more fight with the fine weather. Yeah, certainly. We're just going to change attention here at the moment. Cork Masters football first. We're in the final uh, next week against Derry. Um, how's everything going with that? Any injuries that we can watch out for? No, uh, the lads are training away. We we had training this morning um, at 11 o'clock, so the guys are rearing. It's It's been four years in the making to get to the final. So, you know, we're in the Division 2 final against Derry up in Peregrines in Dublin next Saturday. So it's, it's a momentous occasion for Cork Masters GA. Um, guys are really looking forward to it. You know, we wouldn't have got there without our sponsors there, Dad and STS and a number of other small sponsors who've come on board and, you know, they've helped us to keep the show on the road and we are really, really looking forward to next Saturday now and, you know, full clean bill of health at the moment so we we'll give it our best shot on Saturday and see where we go. Yeah, Sean, just for people that are tuning in later on to watch this Masters football and hauling, how do they go about coming on to it? The days, I suppose, look for waiting for that text message at home is over. It's about um, you need a player now just to come forward as well and put their hand up, I suppose. Yeah, we need players. We're always looking for players. Even, you know, Masters football, you know, we'll be looking for players next year because obviously, you know, some players will move on as they get a bit older. Um, the same with the hurling. I mean, we've had a fantastic, fantastic response to the hurling. We've the bones of 30 odd players you know um, we've had a couple of training sessions to see you know we're only getting to know each other in effect like so you know hopefully that won't affect us today yes uh, certainly i'm um, look um, there's 30 35 36 in the squad here today and training wise in the football um, how many are you getting out for that um football wise we had 14 today uh, training because a lot of we've we've 10 dual players as well so a lot of them are here playing here today as well so um, we're probably one of the few counties that have that many dual players, but um, you know it's been difficult to try and get training together and get guys together. Um, obviously, with the final, the football final coming up next week, so it's been hard to, to try and get the, uh, the full squad together. But look, the guys are loving it, both the hurling squad and the football squad. I mean, I had one of the the Cork lads come back to me there one of the training last week, and he, he just summed it up in a nutshell what Masters is about. He said to me, you know, I never thought I'd see this again. It's great to put the gear on and be in the dressing room with the lads. And that's what Masters is all about. Yeah, certainly. And can you just explain to the people that will be watching in later, if you're a player that's sitting at home and you'll be tuned in tomorrow and the next week, what do you have to do to get involved next year? Just contact us on social media, you know. That's that's generally how we do it. Or, you know, you can get onto our, our web page, you know, and you can get on to each and every one of us. You know, everybody knows somebody. So, you know, anybody that wants to come and play, we'd only be too delighted to have them. Yeah, certainly, Sean. Just jumping back here, Joe Mulcahy, we hope to see Joe very shortly. But um, this is, as you said, an historic day here for the Masters. It's the first game here that we see in Newtown, Chandler, and all over the country, really. Um, yourself and Joe, can you give us a word how all this comes about? Um, I suppose when Limerick came on board with Masters football last year, you know, I got to know Joe and, you know, we're, we're kind of two hurling people. So, you know, it started off with phone calls and... Then we met a few times in the Fergrove Hotel in Mitch's Town and then, you know, Magella came on board. And we kind of um, worked away dis discreetly in the background, quietly. We contacted a number of counties. We had a number of Zoom calls at various other counties. And, you know, the result then is the Gaelic Masters, you know, gave us the green light and the rest is history. And today is the first game and this, this is the fruits of all these meetings. Yes, and certainly um, we can only expect this to expand a bit more in the near future. Hopefully, you know, when people tune in to YouTube now and they watch this game, you know, it, it, you know, hopefully it'll promote the game and we'll get more counties in next year. But, um, like, I suppose the Masters philosophy was start small, see how it goes and, you know, gradually, like, like the football, build on it year on year. Yes, yeah, so Sean, I suppose before we let you go, the most important thing today is uh, for players uh, to get out of here as uh, safe as they can. Get out, uh, yeah, be safe, you know, enjoy, but most of all also enjoy because just remember, like, guys are over 40s you know the family members here just enjoy it and go home at the end of the day the same way you came in and just enjoy the game of hurling
Sean, a credit to you. If you see Joe over, you just give yeah. me a shout there. Thank you, Thanks, sir. sir. Uh, John, you can uh, pop back in here. And um, we'll just give you two, uh, one or two changes here on uh, the Limerick side. And before Joe Mulcahy will join us, just pop in here, uh, John. Uh, just give us out uh, the first change here, first of all, on the Limerick there. It's only just a change yeah, of uh, number wise. A change of number is Mark Kelly is starting and goes, but instead of wearing number one, he's wearing number 16. And Sasha Bulfin is wearing number one, Mick. Yeah, no, no, Mr. you can come one. in here. Yeah, two seconds. You're okay. Stay in the picture there. Pop in here, the two of you again. Uh, Joe Mulcahy is back here on Sean. Joe, we spoke to Sean here. It's an historic day for both, we'll say, football and hurling. And it's going to be on the rise in the coming uh, years to come. This is going to expand big time. No doubt whatsoever about it. And look, what, what a perfect day. Sunshine here, Newton Shandrum. I must have said the whole 20 years ago, the home of cock hurling, really. With the Connors and these lads, Pat Mulcahy and these fellas. We're here playing cock. Where, where else would we want to be? Yes, Joe, we spoke with Sean about how it all started. Fergal Hill meetings and the whole lot like that and has come together nicely. And of course, you've Magella there as well and she'll um, hold on to you and keep you intact. Well, when I spoke to, me, to Sean, I said probably about nine months ago about, about this, I thought there was one other person we wanted to bring in and it was a lady. And I, said, I told Sean, this is not an ordinary lady, she's extraordinary. And by God, when Sean met her, Magella, she's so outstanding and she just goes at everything. She, she gets things done. Yes, that's certainly. I know Magella personally from a Khalid in my time covering games for Clubber down there. Sean, you met her, Magella, and you know the drive and passion she has. It's very simple to see. Yeah, I mean, she's the, Magella's the chairperson of the National Masters Hurling uh, Committee. So, I mean, when Joe brought her in, met her, um, you know, it's so easy to get on, fabulous work, work ethic and um, you know Magella was the person that kind of knitted it all together as I you know as I said earlier I kind of started from discussions myself and Joe had and then we met in the Fairgrove Hotel and then we met Magella and then we kind of had Zoom meetings with various other counties and calls and you know the fruits of, of the, our work now is shown today which is great to see Joe isn't it? Correct, correct. Yeah certainly. Joe we'll catch up with you, we'll let you back Thank after the game you. okay thanks a million there and best of Sean we'll see you after. Uh, John you can just pop back in here uh, just run through um, the jersey change here again. Uh, just Mark Kelly is wearing number 16 in the Limerick goal, he's still starting goals and Saoirse Bulfin will be wearing number one, that's the only change in the Limerick team. So John you can go ahead and uh, call out uh, the Limerick team. Uh, number 16 Mark Kelly, number two Thomas McInerney, Number three, Alan Darty. Number four, Chris O'Connor. Number five, Carol Regan. Number six, Mikey Keane. Number seven, George Kelleher. Number eight, Derek Grimes. Number nine, Tommy Maloney. Number ten, Bat Curtin. Number eleven, Adrian Gravy, vice captain. Number twelve, Patrick Hartigan. Number thirteen, Barry Foley. Number fourteen, Peter Terry. Number fifteen, Michael Dillon. OK, I'll just uh, swing through here at uh, the Cockmasters team. In goals, Kieran Welsh. And uh, number two is Aidan Cockery. Number three is Bernard Kieran. Number four is J.P. O'Driscoll. Number five is Pat O'Connor. Number six is Belly Haystall with Stephen Dennehy. Number seven is the Evergreen, Diarmid Lynch from the Belly Giblin Club in Norcork. Number eight is Colm O'Sullivan. Number nine is Alan Barry. Number ten is Kieran Curtin. Eleven is Ken Turks, Donna Duane. Twelve is Belly Giblin's Dave Moore. You know all about him with Belly Giblin's success in the last couple of years. 13 is Watergrass Hill, JJ Kearney. 14 is Denny Kiley, Belly Feehan. 15 is Brian Tobin Kilwood and Mike uh, Brady will join us. Mike, when you're ready there, please. Um, look, there's a host of uh, players here, John. You've seen the football as well. There's a uh, doubling up and maybe one or two players here. Just pop in here. Um, so look, they have a big final coming up as well. So Donna Duane is one of their top footballers, so they have to be uh, very, very careful in that. Yeah, they'll probably have to mind him for next week, Mick. We, they don't want him getting injured, but in fairness to them, they're all willing to tag out for both and they all just love it. And it's great for them to have a game to play with the county to just massive for these players, Mick. Yeah, certainly. Mike Brady joins us. Mike, you're on that football team against Stan Derry next week. We've seen two or three players here. Look, it's all about enjoying themselves, but they have to keep an eye on next week as well. Absolutely. We've just come from training there now and we reduced numbers down in Clyde this morning because of the hurling. So it's a pity it's kind of clash for this, this week, but sure, we've one week to go now. Big game next next next. Saturday in Dublin, so um, it's all good, but we're going well. We're Mike, going well. back to the football, you had the pleasure, of course, of seeing the great Stephen O'Neill from Tyrone. Um, he's my favourite footballer down through the years, no doubt about it. Left and right, he was the king. And um, just to give you an idea, Stephen, when he came back for Tyrone and they won the All Ireland, he took off straight down the dressing room and off home. He went and the rest celebrated that time. So that'll tell you the, what kind of a man he is. Ah, uh, he's a class. I was actually talking to him afterwards and. Um, 
Ah, look, he's just a class player, one of the best ever to, to, to play football. And like he was a difference on the day. Like it just showed how far we've come in the football over over the last four years. Um, like to be within six points of of Tyrone, like we had a chance of being in the All Ireland semi final of the of the top competition, and they went on to beat Dublin last weekend, and, and Dublin had Bernard Brogan. You know, so you can see Masters is, is growing and growing all the time, you know, and um, like it's great. Like, it just shows we're dining at the top table in the football now. I know the hurling's only starting this year, but like hopefully within a couple of years it'll get to that level as well. You know? Yeah, certainly. We're just going to run through one or two players to watch out for here in today's game. We'll just see what time we have here. We've 10 minutes here, so we have about five minutes. Barry Foley standing out, Monster winner in 96 with Limerick, legend, wearing number 13. May even see him full back. Um, have a look at our number 14 as well from Caroline, Peter Tiernan. No slouch about him. He'll be dangerous in the full forward line. And also so number six is Mikey Keane, his brother, Mark, three-time under-20 winner with Limerick. So John does a bit of experience in all these. There's a couple of stalwarts there. We could spend another 20 minutes talking about them. You have uh, Chris O'Connor, another stalwart there in the corner. Yes, Mike, there are, like all these players, there's none of these coming out here to play that can't play. This game will probably be a very entertaining game and very fast game. This is what they want to do, Mick. There's very good players in the show here, as you said, about the Cork team as well. We all know a few of them. Like, there's none of them slouches, Mick. They can all hurl. This should be a kind of a cracking game, Mick. Yeah, and, you, and just switching over to the Cork team, number 12, Dave Moher, All-Ireland winner intermediate, Munster intermediate. That man has been around the block. Um, he's been with Belly Giblin, uh, Mike. You would have probably heard about him down through the years, haven't you? Believe it or not, when I saw the name, because obviously the hurling, it, it's come together kind of quickly. I didn't know. I actually played Cork Intermediate with him. Uh, in 1995, he was I was corner back, he was corner forward on the other side on the hurling team. So uh, yeah, he was a fine hurler. Fine there, you, hurler. there you go, at least you were on the same team with him. Yeah. And um, keep an eye out on uh, Dave, he'll be number 12, plenty of speed. Also, another few, Kieran Curtin, number 10, serious operator as well. Um, Liz Carroll, Churchtown, Churchtown back in the day when I used to um, see him playing against uh, my own club. Um, in the middle of the park, a word on uh, Colin O'Sullivan. At one stage, uh, going back a few weeks ago, I heard uh, it was all hurling with this man. Oh, geez, like. Collie, Collie, you know Regan and our team, right? Well, Collie is the apprentice. When Regan retires, Collie's taken on that mantle, you know? And as I think as Regan says, he's probably as cracked as, as a box of frogs, you know? But he's a, he's, he's a good footballer. He's a hardy bit of stuff, you know? Uh, I don't know what he's like as a hurler. I've never seen him playing hurling, right? Um, but, like, he'll be half forward next week for us. He'll be centre forward, you know? Um, yeah, he's some player. I'm hearing that. There's a couple of uh, words going around about Mikey Keane is number six for Limerick. Serious stalwart as well. Any any over the back line, he'll be uh, covering over there. Derek Grimes in the middle of the pair. Engine there. So keep an eye out. There's lots here. As um, we know ourselves in during the game here, we'll uh, get to know some of these players. Pat O'Connor from Newtown Shandrum. There was no bad player that came out of Newtown Shandrum. No, as we as was just said there for the last twenty years, I suppose Newtown are one of the top clubs in Cork. Ben O'Connor, Jory O'Connor, Pat Mulcahy, you could go on to name a list and Jamie Cochlin, all these boys, they're all top class hurlers and Newtown is just they breed hurlers, however they can keep doing it, but they do, Mick. Yeah, see Newtown uh, last week against Sales, they give them a nice little eye opener and come the knockout stages against Douglas. You'd never know him, um, they could be um, a little live wire in the senior championship. Um, I want to pick out Stephen Dennehy as well here for um, Cork, All Ireland winner with St. Coleman's College. Um, look what that man, Hearty Cup winner, he's been around the block as well. He would have played uh, with a few of uh, my friends, uh, David Rell and Wesley Walsh, and uh, some operator. Yeah, good operator, Mick, again. And as you say, i just looking through the team here. There's a lot of them I know, there's a few I don't know, but all these fellas that I know, even the goalkeeper there from Kilwa, Kieran Welch, a right good goalkeeper in his day. Many a time he beat my own club, Killarney, when I was a young fellow watching. All these boys, I said to me, they were probably unlucky at the time they were around when Cock Holland was going so well that they didn't get their chance, but now is their chance in the red jersey and no doubt they'll enjoy it. Yeah, certainly. There's lots of players to watch out for. Um, the teams there that we called out for you, it's going to stay like that. Maybe just keep an eye out. Everyone has the same jersey number, so we should have no issues um, with that. Um, final uh, call out here, uh, Denny Kiley and Brian Tobin. A lot of locals here. Uh, Denny Kiley's in 14. Brian Tobin only over the road in Kilbert from ourselves, John. Um, he was another stalwart with uh, Kilbert. Yes, Mick, he was a very good player for Kilbert again, Mick. Uh, there's a load of locals, actually, Mick, that we have watched playing growing up. And, like, all these boys, they've all won major honours with their clubs. They've all got counties to their name. These boys can all hurl, and no doubt I'm looking forward to watching them once more, Mick. Mike, in the Cork team, anything lurking on the bench? 
Um, I'm not sure to be honest. Like, I, like it's only now I've just seen the team. Like, there's five of the football team uh, on the first 15, and I think there's another three. I think on the bench. So that like they'll be fit. I know Cork will be fit. Um, like the preparation, I think has been a bit patchy. So it'll be interesting. To, it'll be interesting to see how, how it'll all work out. You know, um, like. <sighs> How many teams are all together? Six, I think, yep. in, in the entire competition. And I suppose hurling is something you know you either have it or you don't. You know, and you know, you know, if you're older, you don't you don't have to be as fit. You don't have to be as quick, maybe. And if you're able to work the ball, you know, we'll see we'll see how it works out. Yeah, before we finish up here, of course, um, I was sitting at home not so long ago and I see Mike appearing on TV up for the match. Um, oh, yeah. I thought you were going to be sitting alongside the rock at one stage, you were so close. No, I was actually sitting alongside the Davy Fitz's wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was an interesting night. Ah, sure, look, look, I was at the semi final and the final, and um, I, I had my son with me actually and, uh, at both. And the, you know, when it was full time, when it was a draw full time against Slayer, he turned around to me and said, This is a slow form of torture. And it was like, it was difficult as a Cork supporter watching the game but um, but look I think we look back in 10 years time at the All-Ireland final and say it was classic you know and we, we, we'll be happy to have been there you know yeah certainly just going back to the up for the match everyone loves up for the match but there's a small little glitch in this the Camogie final was on a few weeks um, later and maybe we should have up for the match for the Camogie uh, we mightn't have the biggest crowd there but um, why can't we have all the families uh, there in the studio and have a big day for that well look, look I'm not into GA politics or whatever but if you actually take a couple of steps back and look at it, the Masters, the ladies football and the Camogie, it should all be under the GA, you know, and we're all one family, it's the same players, it's the same people and, you know, if it all comes under, like, I know, I look at, look, look at the Masters football or the Masters hurling, you know, there's three or four finals of the different levels, imagine a day in Crow Park with all of those, you know, and, you know, if you've big fellas from 20 years ago playing, people will go to see them. You know, they mightn't pay what they're paying for Oasis for tickets, but they'd go to see you, you know. And I, I think there's a future in that. And people are playing on longer, you know, and, you know, fellas in their early 40s now are still playing senior hurling and football. Like when we played Tyrone a couple of weeks ago, apparently there's five of them still playing with their clubs at, at intermediate and senior level. Yeah, know? some going. We're going to leave you here on um, pitch side. We just head up to the commentary box. Thanks to Mike and uh, John here, and we'll see you there shortly. So we'll strike up there, let's. And we'll be just getting underway here now. Uh, Mike Brady will join me in uh, the commentary box with uh, John McCarthy. Mike, the sun has gone in and uh, that's badly needed. Well, you know, it, it's nearly September, right? And, our, and it's a fantastic day for hurling. Absolutely. It's a bit of a breeze, a bit of a breeze, but look, lovely day. Perfect day and they're ready to get going now. So here we go. So look, as we always say, let's hopefully have uh, no injuries here. And as Mike uh, pointed out, eight footballers here involved uh, for Cork. And... If Mike, to be fair, you don't want to see many here playing the end of this game. We're nervous. I'd like I'd be honest, I'm nervous about it, you know, from that point of view. But look, here we go. On the way here, so and we'll see um how this pairs out here as um favourite tags, you couldn't call it Mike, it's the opening game here, but Limerick are on the attack and that's uh, the first uh, ball here that'll just go in around and just uh, yes, test goal. Oh and it's got into the back of the net. And that is, we just have Brian a look at Tobin. Brian Tobin has nicked in there just to settle it down. And there you go, straight away. The Kilworth man just rifles it in, Mike. And that's uh, some stat. Great ball in front of the Dwan. Long ball. Great staff for call. So here we go over in the other corner again. John, come over the other side of me here. So, yeah, just push over there. Sorry, Donald, lads. So as we just make our bearings here in the commentary box, so Tobin just got the first one there, so keep an eye on that John uh, scoreline, because um, we don't know if that'll be working right. It's working now, but it might be working later as uh, Limerick tried to uh, come back into this. But um, an explosive start here, sideline over in the corner again, right down the corner that time. Barry Foley was nudging away over there, but it's cleared out by Aidan Cockbury. Mike, um, look, they're going to take control here a bit. We expect uh, Limerick, and this is exactly what we talk about. They have a small bit, one or two more players on this pitch here, but Adrian Garvey, is the man that has uh, rifled that over the bar. Um, they are solid enough. We're hearing the word around the places that there's a couple of these players uh, flying in their uh, training and still going strong with their clubs. Yeah, I think they probably have a bit more preparation done than Cork, you know. But at least we, we, we've got a good start. You know. It's a great start to the game, you know. 
So here we go, it's Batley around the middle of the field there. Gavi was trying to nudge in for it, but Cork come over to Dinahy, the man from Belly here. Norcock gets it right out the wing here. Super ball now as uh, Cork snapped the attack. There's another launcher there. as a long way out that time there, but it's going to be trying to be kept in, in the corner. And it is kept in here, but it's back out just over the head and can it be slotted over the bar. And there is a good opportunity, and it is gone over the bar. And we reckon that is number 14, Denny Kiley here, as we just try to get our bearings here. John, um, a good start down by Cork. A good start by Cork and a great ball in there and well won inside and well worked in a great score, Mick. Yeah, super Dinny, he will pick it up again. He's uh, sweeping lovely there on the back line. Nice ball down the pitch here and towards the pass. Moher that time. Moher will be looking back for it again. Tobin has it now. Was there free there? The referee said no. Dave Moher trying to come in for it now from Belly Gibbon. And referee uh, gives uh, free out. Mike, uh, super start here. 1-1 uh, to a point. Um, it's, as we said, it's going to be hard to judge this. But um, any more goals here? And uh, goals wins game. Great start from the full forward line. You know, we, 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 we had a goal from Tobin, number 13, and the full forward has just scored. And then come back on again. Oh, superbly hooked there, and that is some score. It was robbery right out of there from a Peter Tiernan. And John, uh, that said a little quick, the mind, everything was thinking. Everything was thinking there, Mick. The cock back was probably a bit slow, but if it was a great rob and a great score, he didn't need a second invitation. Very quick hands, Mick. Yeah, over the other side there, that was Patrick Hartigan was involved in it over Mike. Uh, super score there, to be fair. He nipped in and flicked it away. Yeah, super hook, super hook. It'll be interesting to see you now who had, like whoever has done the more hurling will come out in time, you know. So here we go, deep over here again. This is all about just getting your getting settled here, getting the scores on the board, seeing what can happen here in Limerick. I'm playing with a slight breeze over in the corner and they can't get it that time as Barry Foley is trying. Keep an eye out on Barry, 1996 amongst the winner with Limerick. And that's some achievement and um, he can play full back as well. He can play anywhere really. Yeah. Um like when you have experience like that in the tank it'll stand in a day like today you know because like obviously there's some lads playing and they're wearing a jer red jersey maybe for the first time and sometimes that can be a way it can be a bit heavy for lads you know we'll certainly here so here we go Kieran Welch from Kilworth launches it in there that is a, a slick ball Mohers free if you can see him over here he'll get a chance you know to slot it over the bar Tobin that time again and um, he's win for it again and there you go that is a super start by the man from uh, Kilworth and Norcock make that a uh, 1-1 for Torben. 1-1 one, one for Torben. He's very, looking very lively. A great ball there by Welch to Torben. And in fairness, he didn't need a second invite. He looks like he's on fire today, Mick. Yeah, he scored a goal from the corner forward line. Now he's operating at centre forward, wearing number 15, white helmet, when you're watching. And so Cork and um, Mike have picked out a few changes. Can you see anything else? No, can't see any changes. I think I think they're lining out as, 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 as on the programme, you know. Um, but Tobin looked fast there, took on his man and was confident and a great pass by the goalkeeper. Yeah, Kieran battling over there if he can get it that time. And they do come out with a cork of a chance. So Duane will pick it up here. He's on his own half, having a look around. A uh, footballer to Holla Holla today. Lovely again by Tobin. Nice at the sidestep here, right in around the 45. Ball over here to the sideline. Opportunity here, right out in the sideline. That time for Kieran Cork. And there's just coming in, it's dropping around the areas again. But uh, they slotted out uh, Limerick and they'll start the attack here. And uh, Joe Kelleher will have it and he launches it deep into the cock defence. Let's see, will the second ball be won here? That's the key and there is the second ball and JP O'Driscoll tries to read it that time and they do, they get it out back to JP again. He has it, that was a free mic but the referee says uh, play on. Uh, he does well uh, to get it out, he was just waiting for it. He has a launcher here from uh, Colin O'Sullivan. Let's see what happens here into the danger zone now. Second ball again is key here. Inside, can they pick it up again? And Cork have it right outside them. We can just see it here. It's just, is that nudged over the bar from Dave Moher? He was the jolly inside around the box. That could have been a goal, John. Yeah, just very unlucky. He had to just flick it. Sometimes they just drop under the bar. That just dropped over. But a great start from Cork here, Mick. One, three to two points up. It is very lively. And in fact, it's a great start from both of them. Good hurling being played here, Mick. Yes, and that's a strong breeze, uh, Mike, uh, for Limerick. But uh, Cork are well in control here so far. Let's see, can uh, they come back into Limerick again there? But Garvey again, just to keep him settled down. And he is. That's a good start by Garvey. That's his second, Mike. He knows what the post is. Absolutely. High tempo game so far, Mick, here. But um, Cork full forward line seem to have the measure of Limerick's full back line. Limerick are in trouble in the full back line at the moment, which is great from a Cork point of view, and hopefully it'll keep going. You know, Ref played a great um, uh, advantage there for the Cork. Uh, Cork should have a goal on that side. They were just unlucky, but they got a point. Yeah, that's a swipe on Grimes there, and that'll be a free here as the referee uh, calls it in. Uh, John, um, that was an early, just a stray um, hurley there, but uh, Grimes there in the ticket of the action in the middle of the park. Um, we will stress there is a strong breeze here, so but, and Limerick are playing with it. That's the worry for Limerick. 
Yeah, Limerick are playing with a strong breeze, but I have to give credit to both teams. I don't think there has been a wide yet make from any of the shots. It is serious quality and you guys, as we said before the game, all these boys can hurl it and in fairness, they've settled well both teams, it's looking like it's going to make a cracker and there's a bit of bite to it, which you want to see. Yeah, so there's a, a super a shot there, let's see where that goes from uh, Barry Foley and that's gone right over the bar, Barry's uh, operating on the uh, top of the left there and there you go, slide over the bar there, nice and cool, uh, there was no driving into the sky no. there, am I? No, 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 and you were saying there the, the wind's in favour of Limerick, I'm not so sure, I'd say it's blowing kind of straight across the field, you know, our centre-back's playing well here. So then he gives that ball into the forward line, he and yes, as Mike rightly said, it's swapping around here as Kylie tries to earn it inside. He's a big full forward, a super stamp by Kylie. He has a point already to his name. Just loses out here as Cork need to come out with it again and try to get something going. They have a chance here, and this is a good opportunity now from Kieran Curtin. And that has gone right over the bar. And another one, John Debris, as Mike rightly said, one way it's going, we can't judge it now. No, it seems to be swapping and changing, Mick, but I just can't get over the quality of shooting here. There hasn't been a wide and there hasn't been any silly shots. They're working the ball first, well, both teams. And and they're doing the right thing and in fairness there's some high quality scores being got here Mick. Yeah so there's the ball down the sideline just that ran out there that time by uh, Grimes. So uh, it's good to see a big big crowd here. There's, there's, there's about uh, 200 uh, people here at the moment so Mike had said there's probably a bit more coming in as well yeah, over on the other side. Right. He said there's more than 200 people here. This is the biggest match I've seen at a Masters game so far. The biggest crowd I've seen at a Masters game so far. So Grimes trying to pick it up, he loses it out there, he'll get a chance to flick it up, but he doesn't that time. And Garvey has a good snap by Garvey, two points his name already, and he's going to get a free here. And we're going to see uh, Foley again come over, he's about 70 metres out. And over right alongside us in the commentary box, there is literally uh, no breeze here now on pitch side, there's only a slight bit. So Foley has it over here, the way he snapped it off, um, anything is possible. So he's after a good, good snap inside in the corner here, Foley, 65 out, 66, 67, let's see what he does here with it. Limerick just needs to respond. Some good scoring, 1 4 to 4 at the moment, and Foley launches it again. And that is just gone right over the bar. That's what we mean. And when we said the first point, Mike, if there's anything too high there, the, uh, the breeze is going to drag it. No, he just used the breeze to, live, to pull it in there. But like you could see, the supreme confidence taking the free. Like it's, it's over 65 metres out, so it can't be class. Yes, when you've won Munster titles in front of 60,000 people, that's what it all comes down. Today is only a little normal day out for him. Over here again for Moher, that, that time back over here. Chance here for David Lynch, he launches it. He wouldn't be in his uh, locker of getting a pint, but he had a good effort there. It's going to be cleared out by Alan Doherty this time for Limerick. Back out here that time to Keane. Keane will snap the attack here, deep into the corner again. Cork need to come out and respond here. A nice little pull there, way out, but Kiernan is there with him. And he has it up and he's going to drive it. That's a super ball from the belly Hooli man. Bernard Kieran out again towards Sullivan in the middle of the park as they try to pick it up here again. Limerick trying to respond. Tobin is everywhere. And uh, for the opening 10 minutes here, John, uh, Brian Tobin has uh, been the standout player. Yeah, he's kind of the star on the show. He's everywhere on the pitch. He's hopping fit and being on his break and tackles, taking tackles and fairness, if they don't come to terms with him, he could do serious damage before this game is out, Mike. Yes, um, he's a bright start. You could pick out a few, as you said, Mike. Uh, the full forward line had started well, but uh, Brian is operating centre at the moment. They've moved him out since, yeah, yeah. He's class on the ball. Like he's, he, his, touch, his first touch is good and he's got clear pace. So here we go. This won't be far away. We know the drive that this man has. Welch from Kilworth. It's gone high again, but it's a tailing to the right. And will it be kept in in the corners? Uh, Kylie was trying to keep it in, but it's just gone out there. Mike, uh, that's some up the breeze there I think and that kind of um, it held it back there didn't it, it? Whereas, whereas it curled it over for Barry it, it, it held up there you know but um, no like it's um, yeah Tobin seems to be out around centre forward now and probably get more ball out there you know so here we go again, it's tickets fast here in Newtown Chandram, the home of the O'Connor Twins, two legends for Cork down through the years and many more, Pat Mulcahy as well, you could uh, read a load of these players, uh, there was some team in their time here, back over here, Dinny, nice little sidestep again from Bally here, ball out here as they start the attack, super ball there by Pat O'Connor from Newtown, in towards Kylie, Kylie goes over again, he'll try to keep it in, that time Doherty swings in it and it's just gone out, um, why there, John? Um, nice, um, nice start by uh, both teams. It was always going to be trying to feel each other out and uh, get to know and see what uh, can happen in the closing stages of the first half, which is always going to be tough in your first day. Always tough in your first day, but I have to say the quality of Holland here is very high. Both teams are giving it everything, and in fairness, both teams are making mostly using the ball right, and in fairness, you can't fault any of them. It's superb stuff. 
And that was just a snapshot there, John, just gone wide. But uh, I suppose that's maybe one or two wides, and we're only after having, um, you can see, like, this has been a um, real, real top uh, hurling, uh, Mike. And uh, to be fair to him, uh, they've, um, they've all turned up, really. Absolutely. It's hard to see it staying at this pace for the full game. But um, back into Dermot Lynch on the ball here now. So Lynch is trying to wrestle it. Grimes is there as well. And so is uh, back caught and they're trying to nick it in here. But that time it comes out here. That time by Foley over the head again. But in towards that Keanan. Oh, it could be kept in from 65. It is. Oh, just last out and that's gone over there. It had... Um, it had survived the first one, but the second one went just out there. And we'll see here, uh, Foley will be coming over again uh, to keep um, Limerick intact. Uh, John, just a bit sloppy there. Just a bit sloppy there. He should have probably got that into his hand. But as we said, it's the first day out and they haven't the whole pile done. But in fairness, they probably just unlucky with the bobble as he went to catch it. So the, the, the ground is hard as well, you know. We haven't had that much rain, you know. So it's fast hurling. It's fast hurling. Pitch is bare as well. So here we go, this uh, chance here now for Limerick again, nothing easy here, but uh, Foley has it up on the stick again, he strikes it, he guides it again, and uh, the umpire's just waving that to our right and uh, wide, and that's uh, his first miss, but um, look, it's going to come, there's a lot of that going to come into play here, and the opening um, exchanges here was uh, quite uh, frantic, uh, John, and you can't expect to keep that up. Oh, the pace is after Saturday, it's like a senior championship game that you see above in Croke Park, Mike, so you'll be saying at 40 years of age, you probably can't keep that going for 60 minutes. No. But you can't fault him at the moment. Yeah, certainly as they're on the attack, Tobin launches it over here. Chance here now for Cork again to slot another one over the bar. And they take their time and they strike Mike. And that's what it's all about. And Tobin was the man that was on the spot again. And he swung it over, a beautiful ball over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I think we've only had two wides in the entire game. And it's one five to five points. Great start by both teams. Yeah, super as the ball uh, comes over here again, right down the side again. And the umpires are calling it over there, just that uh, wide that time. Um, a great start, and this, the changes are still happening. You can see um, Dave Moore is okay. He's on the left over here, and on the far right, we have um, Kieran Corton is after changing around. So lots of changes around. And Duan was the score of the, the last score there, but we'll just pick up here. We'll just keep an eye on uh, Moore. That's a free again there. Yeah, there's a lot of changes again, and Kylie's gone in full forward, staying in around there. He was operating kind of out near number 11, but um, yeah, Mike, they're still bringing around a few changes, and yeah, just they're, they're swapping our they're players swapping. around. That's what seems to be happening. They seem to be swapping, trying, causing a bit of upset, which worked in the start, because the Limerick full back line were at sixes and sevens, but um, here we have a free for Park now, Donald Duan. So here we go again, chance now for Dunnett to launch it over the bar for his second in a couple of moments here. He could have another score here for Cork. He's about 50, 55 metres out. Let's see what he can happen straight in front of the goals. As um, we see with Kieran, it's they're too high sometimes it was dragging. But here we go and that is uh, launched right over the bar. Super free taker, uh, to be fair to him. And that is um, what it's about and you need him. Yeah, Dunn is well able to kick outside the D in football and he's obviously able to do it in hurling as well. Is there anything he can't do? So back over here, just over O'Sullivan again. Then he swipes it, gets it out here, but Limerick pick up the second ball and that's the key to them that time. Keen tries to get it over again, he does, but Sullivan will launch it here. He does into the forward lane again. Kylie was trying to nick it in here. He has it this time. Kylie was trying to pick it up there. Number 14 in the back. He's a big unit around the forward line. He's trying to engineer a goal inside it. Tobin is the danger man. He has it up. He's been lively in the corner. Tobin just loses out that time as they're tenacious as they come by uh, Tomas uh, McInerney is coming over with it there and he got a free there but Tobin is causing damage he's causing damage and he's probably unlucky Mick not to get a free there he was pulled back but in fairness he's everywhere and he's lively and if they keep getting ball to him and if he can keep going like this for 60 minutes any back he's going to have his hands full Mick yeah super so we think we see there one six to five points we'll keep that I'm rolling there as long as we can see it and the scoreboard keeps going of course and we'll need the person in the scoreboard to stay there it doesn't always happen Mike no it certainly doesn't but um Kylie inside there in the full forward line whereas he's not getting on the ball he's a big physical presence and it's suiting like a toe and picking the brakes up around him you know yeah, just the clash there around the head area and um, referee has just called over and they'll just bring in some water for for him just to see um, will he be okay. He went down very um, straight away so it was looked like he did get a nasty little uh, tick on it. He looked like he got a little touch there when your man caught the ball but if it's a free to Limerick make you be thinking it's very harsh one because he caught the ball and your man went to tackle him and he met him when he was going through with the ball but I'd say it's just stop play because of the head injury make to be honest about it. 
Yes, any head injuries, and there's no uh, margin for error. At, at the end of the day, this is a friendly mic. It was paid, maybe not at friendly, but that's the way it'll be taught about. Well, the, in the Masters, there's a spirit of inclusion, but all the Masters games I've played, it's been no quarter given or taken. You know, you get stuck in, and it's like any championship game you'd play, you know. That's the danger, and that's what um, we're watching out for. That's the key to it. There's going to be no um, margin for error like that. Everyone is going to lift. He's going to really get stuck into it, but you have to remember at the end of the day, lads, um, Monday morning is the key to getting up for work. I know, make Monday morning is the key for getting up for work, but I'd say the 30 fellas out here now at the moment, the last thing on the mind is probably Monday morning. It's Cock versus Limerick, and as we all know, Cock v Limerick, there's never an inch given, Mick. So there you go, the boys reckon here that um, there could be a lot worse than this uh, head injury to come. So we'll see how that happens and hopefully not as uh, the Limerick uh, team here, just one or two more switches and changing up and down the pitch. But I uh, look at, to be fair, it, is, it just has slowed down. We expected that. And for uh, Limerick, um, Mike, I suppose, Barry Foley is in the standout player and Adrian Garvey. So far. Adrian Garvey, they're the two that are, that are showing well at the moment. And for Cork, then you, you've Tobin, Donna Dwan's playing quite well. The centre back is having a good game as well. Yeah, That's gone over the bar there from Foley. Point from Foley there again now, yeah. So 1 6 to 6 points now. So it's all going well here, nice and tight, that's what we expected and that's what we hope. No, uh, no uh, favourite tags here today, certainly there's a super ball again by Tobin Cottigan, hand passed in here, he's in operating at a high level, lovely little swivel from uh, Dewan again, will he keep a keep and he guts away but at that time, very very lucky there John, as they clear the lines from Kelleher, Kelleher launches it into the 40th, the second ball is key and that super play just dragged into Jaws again that time, over the head and uh, Foley will be calling back for free, right in front of the goals, a uh, good ball by Kelleher her out and therefore he picked it up with his ease at the left hand. A great ball out and very unlucky there, the cock kind of forward was just a millimetre away and one touch it was a goal and said no it's a free in here and probably another point for Limerick so it is a big swing for Limerick now here Mick. Yeah certainly so here we go again, uh, Barry Foley has it, right you could say under 65 right in front of the goals we can see the crowd here you can see it in the camera we can definitely certainly say Mike I give it about maybe three or four hundred could be here between both sides ah, it's fantastic like it's you know, Kirk Hurling does bring out the crowds not a score for Barry Foley that's gone over to Garrigan from Barry Foley and of course when you're in the home of Hurling in Newton Chandram the kids were here and they're Absolutely. always going to be out again and the other thing as well like you mentioned the Kirk Limerick rivalry like that's a lot stronger up in this neck of the woods than it is we say so to Cork City you know yeah certainly and uh, they're all out here the kids all over the place are uh, playing and that's uh, the way it was always in Newtown and that's why um, they're one of the top clubs in North Cork and in the, anywhere around the county and we're going to have a look here for um, one or two more subs we think there's one or two are going to be coming on and John will call through a substitution if you think it comes on here but Cocker on the attack there that time by Lynch Lynch gives the ball and just passes out Alan Barry from Bride Rovers but it's back again here Lynch will pick it up that time lovely chance here to put the ball down the wing here we go now this is the key the second ball here was there a drag back there in the corner that time there wasn't the referee said play on in JJ Carney but they're still battling over in the corner and they need to get it out here Limerick and they survive that and here's a free for Cock which Duane will take a John substitution in. Number 25 came in there, make for number uh, number 25, Patrick O'Connor came in there for number 10, Bat Cotton and the Limerick team. And there was a change inside full forward, make two. I can't see the number that came in, but I know Derek Grimes went off. Number okay, one. number 21 is in here also for Limerick, and that's Ed O'Neill from the Pearshire Club. So, yeah, that's what we expected out of changes. He's a big unit inside in the full forward line. He'll cause a bit of damage maybe with a high ball, Mike. Yeah, they brought in a few tall forwards there, so it'll be interesting to see what effect that will have now. But Cork looked dangerous inside in the full forward line. The ball is breaking inside there, and they look like... They look like they can score in there. Now we've done another one here now with a free. Here we go. He's been unearing. Will that be the commentator's cost? We're going to find out here that time. And it is gone over the bar. Super point again by him. And Patrick O'Connor's gone in here on that Damon Lynch. So he's um, wing forward. But as we said, the switch is changing. There's a lot of things happening here. And we expect a lot more as um, this uh, game... Uh, goes to the end, 1-7-7 uh, seven to seven here so far, so a great opening here and that's what we expected, nice and tidy as they battle over on the other side, the referee is trying to let it play on that to be fair to him and there was a nice little just slap of the shoulder there came out, we couldn't see who got that Mike but um, what is certainly uh, at play here if Cork keep giving freeze um, Barry Foley is going to tot up here 12 to 15 points. Correct, yeah Barry punish him alright, yeah but uh, to be fair to the ref, he's letting it run you know and 
you know, we're not looking at too much tactics here. It's kind of back to old style 15 against 15 hurling again, um, which is good. And I think that's that's what the spectators are coming out to see, you know, today. But um, the one thing I say about Barry Foley, Aidan Corkery on him, he's good sticky back, he's centre back in the football. So. Yeah, certainly there. And that has gone over the bar. Um, it's been mainly a freeze from Barry. He might have got one from play, but he's showing he, the, the style, Mike, that I'm looking at him. Looks like um, he's a man in uh, his 30s that's playing. Yeah, he looks very relaxed on the ball. Like those frees are effortless for him, you know. It's a great catch by Colley there now. Super catch here out to Duane out in the sideline again. He'll have a chance to steady himself here. Oh, and he just, just pulled it at too much time there, John. Yeah, the cost of this say When you have no time, you'll score. And when you have too much time, you'll make a balls of it. But in fairness to him, we can't fault him. He's been on air until now. Yeah, he's been absolutely brilliant here. Sorry as, about the as back on the way here again, right over in the corners, Lynch tries to win the second ball. He does, but out here to Dennehy. Dennehy needs to touch it away. Oh, he's just moved out there, and this is where Ed O'Neill picks it up, and that's what we said. He's dangerous. And I actually thought, Mike, did he, uh, did he swipe it? Holly tried to into the face. He got a bit lucky there. He, he was lucky there, I'd say. The, the ball didn't come up for Dennehy, and the new full forward, O'Neill, I think his name is, right? He's. He seems he's out for a battle. Yeah, he was looking for a battle there. He was trying to get the holly out of the hand, but it went up around the face guard, but he got out the rub of the dice there and uh, the roll of the green, as they say. So it's gone right here again for four league. And as we said to you there a few moments ago, um, this is um, very, very simple for this man here, right in front of the goals. And he'll bring another one here, and this will be uh, their 10 points. So, and that is another ball going right over the bar. So we make that, if the scoreboard is correct, the sides are level here. Sides are level, 10 points to 1-7. And I suppose the, his freeze are a problem with Cork at the moment. Barry Foley, is, is he after getting seven or eight of them, I'd say? Yeah, so time is ticking on here. So we make it uh, about seven minutes towards half time. Another super catch there by Sullivan that time over on the sideline. Back from Moher, back in over here. Just going to pass Torben. It's going to run for Duane again. He has a chance to pop it. Oh, it's gone right over the bar. But he's picking up some ball. And um, he's uh, coming more into the game. And he looks like a solid, solid player. Uh, he's a very good player on weekend. In fairness, I'd say he was going for the top corner. He was very unlucky, just a little bit high, but they're getting into the right places. In fairness, they're creating chances. And you have to say, this looks like it's going to go right down to the wire, Mick. Yes, obviously fitness is going to come into play here, but they're both our teams, to be fair, looking very, very solid here. Over here on the full forward again, Peter Tiernan and Cohen, Barry Foley. But Foley brings it back here to Gary. Gary touching the holiday. there. Gary out on the side, then he'll take on Lynch. But Lynch actually touched it off him there. He might uh, get a bit of a, ru a rub there of that, but he doesn't. That could have easily gone that uh, cock's way, Mike. It could have been, I'd say, probably not off the hurley, but you know, if you were the one to strike it, it's usually given against you. you know? Just a mention there for Colin O'Sullivan as well, because he won a great ball, plucked the ball out of the sky and gave it to the ball on the last time. Sideline ball here now for Linda. So here we go, anything is possible with uh, Foley. Foley right down the sideline here, you're going to get a bird's eye view of this if he's going to go. He's going to be like Aaron Galan if this comes off again. He swung it right across, but blocked down again. Lynch picks it up, nice catch there, clear these lines up brilliantly. Here's the second ball, that's the key now, that time, and they launch it in towards O'Neill the full forward line and there's the big hand he gets a nice little swipe here for Kieran back over in the corner then Barry the man from Bride Rovers and he's caught try to get it out there and he's just a stone throw away from for my John and that could have been a free in there as well it could have been a free in in fairness to, as we said Mick Cockfield Limerick does not he yard been given there's no love loss out here Mick that was a fair swipe and in fairness does not he yard been given it's a great game to watch you have to love this hard hurling Mick I'd say Bernard Keenan there the, the rule is if the hand goes up it must come off you know took the hand off him but got away with it there was no free given on anyway. number 24 is in for Limerick the legend Joe Mulcahy from the Khalidi Club and um, Joe will probably see him um, in the coming um, months as well for their um, All-Ireland Tournament Junior B Tournament Mike I don't know if you ever heard about the tournament in Khalidi it's absolutely the All-Ireland series around um, Junior B it is but it's um they look after the people there. It's the, for me, it's the biggest tournament in Ireland. I've heard of it, all right. I've never been fortunate enough to participate, but uh, I'd like to go sometime. Yes, uh, certainly. Um, what they do um, in Kilidi is unbelievable after every game as that's gone sailed over the bar again by Foley. Um, before um, every game and everything, uh, the people come into the hall, sandwiches after, the whole lot, everyone is treated like um, royalty there. And that's what it's about. And the crowds come from everywhere and everyone respects the tournament as well. Back here in Newtown Chandram, here as uh, Denny, he tries to swipe it over on the other side again as Cork looking to get back in it here. But uh, Limerick coming into it slightly here again. Nice little side foot there from Gavin. 
Harvey looking for his third point but that won't hold and that's gone out to the left and wide John Am um, it's settling down a bit more Limerick coming into it again but it, it, you have to say it's the freeze that are keeping him in it yeah the freeze are keeping him in it in fairness if you keep giving freeze to Foley he's not going to miss one in fairness you could nearly bring him back onto the county team to strike freeze he's striking him that well Mick yeah he's certainly striking well it's, he's been only hearing um, there's loads of changes happening there number 22 is in over there as well Kieran Maloney is in from Salt Hill Knockville so keep an eye more changes happening and Mike um, we're expecting all that um, to a lot more to come on I suppose for those watching Masters for the first time the, the one difference in the rules is roll on roll off subs you can bring on as many subs as you like Limerick have brought on a lot of subs they brought on four or five subs and it seems to have made a bit of a difference they seem to dominate the last five minutes of the game they're only popped over a few points and they're taking the lead so let's see now will Cork respond Yes, and um, we're coming up towards our half time here. Uh, John, uh, the score line, I suppose, is the way we want it. We want it nice and tight. We don't want anyone running away, but we want um, a good game and a good solid um, outing for both teams just to give uh, the Masters the lift that um, it deserves. Oh, yeah, miss, the Masters is massive, but like, people over 40 can play, and as we were saying there, there's still people playing with their clubs and all. This is a massive honour to play for your county at any grade. It doesn't matter if it's from under 10 up, you want to play with your county. It's all about putting on the jersey. And in fairness to these two teams, you wouldn't pick them out as masters. Others, you'll be picking them out that they could play with any county at the moment. Where Superman is Barry Foley right out the sideline, just blocked down again. He'll be trying to come back over again here. Can he get over and get it out again? There'll be certainly there. There's about three or four around him as Foley tried to win. And Gavi has it now right on the sideline. He'll bring it back to Brick Flick style. That's over. And that's another huge ball again in around. That'll tell Shaw Welch out here. A super catch there. And that should be a free out. But the referee says play on. Over here as uh, Duan will start the attack now. He's back in his own half. Nice ball right across the field here for Lynch. Lynch will get a chance to just sidestep him here. He does. It's on the stick here that time. He'll be looking out to the corner. There might be a little flick on if he can get out to Duane here. Nice little bit of skill there. Lynch tried to nick it back. He couldn't carry. He has it up now. He'll need to get it up. That's a bit of a wayward shot. Lynch is coming back. There was no malice in it that time, but uh, they pick it up again. Just missed out Duane. Nice little strike there. Look at that and you can put that right up. That's gone right over the bar. A super swivel by Tunner Duane over the bar and I'm telling you, Ben O'Connor will like that one. That's the score of the match so far. Fantastic score by Dunner. Much harder to get than the previous one he missed, but he, he's having a great game centre forward. Callow Regan starts the attack, but it's intercepted here as Cork come out again with Lynch has it over that time. Nice little sides up again. Another huge ball over here. And back in towards a county, but intercepted by Regan that time. Regan gives it out here. Super ball to O'Connor. O'Connor will try to get up. Hand pass it out there. Was it a hand pass? Patrick Hartigan is the man that had the shot in here again. But uh, Kieran Welch will save it out here and start the attack here as we come up towards half time. And we don't expect uh, much more lambs half over the head there of Dave Moore. He has hasn't seen much of it to be fair uh, Dave uh, the ball has kind of bypassed him No it hasn't come down this side that much um, Dunn has been getting a lot of balls centre forward right? and, and David hasn't got that much but I'm sure there's, like, there's half the game to go yet he'll get his chance to come in in the ebb and flow of the game but it's it, it's it's a hard enough game Like the, um, there's nobody holding back you know, that's one thing for sure um, the one thing I'd say with Cork in the back line there there's a lot of footballers in the back line and you know they have a bit of connection between them they're, able to tide, they're tidy with picking the ball up and hand passing it out and I, that's working pretty well Limerick scores are coming from freeze that's, that's the issue yeah, so here we go again. Foley is a long way out again. He's traced that huge, and that is another super score from Barry Foley right over the bar again. As we said there uh, moments ago, like the way he's striking the ball, um, he could be ready for John Kiley maybe giving him a shout again there if um, Peter Casey and Aaron Callan aren't around to take freeze. We kind of have to cut out the foul, and the cock are probably on top from open play, but as you said, Foley's free taking has been magnificent, Mickey. You wouldn't see it many places. Yeah, Cork start to attack O'Connor there, but it's gone over the sideline again. Coming up towards half time here. And uh, look, it's where we want it here 9, 10, 11, 12 sides level here. And that is um, the way uh, the Masters, you'd like to see this going for the opening game. Uh, Mike, Cork haven't made many changes. Limerick have rang maybe four or five. No, and that's been the policy in the football as well this year. Player 15 and stick with it. Haven't used the rolling subs at all. We've even cut the panel down to 24. So you're not sitting with 30 people and, and the same policy is here in the hurling. Whether that'll come to haunt us or not, I'm not sure, you know. It's worked for Limerick, I think. It gave them a bit of um, a splurge there, you know. But the, the freeze definitely, we have to look... I think Limerick happened at three points in play, I'd say, out of 12, you know, and like even, I know Barry Foley get all the, the plaudits there. He's done nothing in, in, in general play. It, all, all the scores are in freeze. 
Yes, I did. Been getting a good few frees, to be fair. Here we have more. Now he hasn't seen much, but there's a free in again there for Cork. But it's going to go over the bar, and uh, he's going to get the. Uh, yeah, that's okay. He, there could be a ticking here as well, and the referee give the advantage there as well. But it lapped over the bar. Super score from uh, Dave Moher and um, got a nice little wallop down the hand, Mike. Uh, yeah, like should we just spoke about him there that he wasn't in the game, but should we know he has the ability? Like, and like that was his first chance, got it over the bar. Like most of Cork's. Um, scores are coming from play, which is which is good. I think they have to measure their back line. Um, Kirk, uh, oh, it's half time now, is it? I think. Yep. So it's half time here, and uh, look, it's been a good half. Moher just nicks it over the bar there for a one point lead here. It's a uh, one ten to twelve points. Barry Foley's freeze have kept. No doubt about it. Uh, Limerick in uh, this game. If uh, Cork can uh, see out that and keep him down to maybe. Two three or four frees in the second half they could run out um, winners but um, it's all still here to play for John I'm going to let the two of you talk away there while I go and get a refreshment and you can tell Marta when you're finished to take a break okay the only thing I would say about this is the scoring goals in Newtown has been dominantly been the top goals from when we were playing here at underage it looks a bit harder to hit frees into this goals I so maybe it, it looks that way. I said there's a bit of a hill down as well, isn't there? Is there a slope down the field? There looks to be a bit of a slope there, yes. So maybe Cock are doing well to be a point up in the first half and it looks like they'll have the elements with them in the second half, but as we know elements don't win you any game. No, and, and maybe less so in hurling and anyway, probably a bigger effect in, in in football, you know. But the, the, the positive thing for me is the amount of play the, the amount of points that Cork have got from play. And, and you know, taking good points from out the field. Um, that's a good sign. There's a good spray of scores across all the forwards there, and no, no, it's, it's a good performance. And I, I know, like in general, talking to people in general, are a bit concerned about how Cork will perform here today because, like, the preparation has been a bit disjointed because of the football, and and like. The lads are only getting to know each other. They're only new together. And like, if you go back and look at the football, four years ago when it started, I wasn't there the first year. But like, they got hammered in every single game. Every single game. The following year, we won a game and drew a game. The year after that, we won three games. This year, we won five out of our six round robin games. You know, and the hurlers have made a much better start anyway. Yes, they seem to have been. They seem to have gelled well together. But as you said, there's a lot of the footballers playing with them. Maybe that has helped them because the footballers know each other and. I suppose hurling is probably easier to gel because you either can hurl or you can't hurl and in fairness to the 15 boys they can all hurl. Absolutely and the beauty about hurling is like tactics tactics or football are suit better in football. You can kill a game easier in, in football with tactics. You, know? you don't have footballers, you can put 15 behind the ball and no matter how good the other team are, they're not going to get a cricket score on you, you know. But in hurling, you can't really do that. Like, it says, fellas, there, it's a Barry Foley there took a free for 70 yards out and put it over straight over the black spot, you know. Yes, and we'll leave it there now and we'll go get a refreshment and we'll be back in five. And uh, we're on the way here again in Newtown, so there's lots of changes happening now as uh, Diamond Lynch was trying to wrestle it back here, but uh, Limerick are on the attack that time, and over here's Patrick O'Connor trying to get it out here, and they've engineered another freeze, so it's the very same uh, thing here that's going to happen again. Foley is going to come over and put it over the bar. Yeah, the discipline is an issue. It's, it's an issue. Um... If you remember, Mick, we did the one earlier on the air in the football with Cork against Kerry and Cork were kicking bad ball and they did it all night. Our problem here is, is giving away a freeze. Yes, and, uh, and the biggest problem now is going to be punished again here by uh, Foley. Uh, Breeze probably suits him better now, but we'll see. That could be um, the big thing here. So let's have a look here. And uh, Foley has a chance here to launch it over the bar. And that's uh, gone over there, and there you go. It's uh, back to square one here again. Uh, sides level here, John. Um, Gary Foley started off again. Um, no mistaking there, and we know that as we pointed out here. He's back off to the other side against Cork. Comes over to Tobin, has it right on the other side of the field, but he's a long way from goal. He gives the brick pick back here to Lynch. Lynch will swing it right across here to Dunnadoan. The right man is in the right place, and that is the right um, thing that they want to happen. And that's gone a beautiful score by Duane again over the bar. Uh, he's been a standout performer also. Absolutely, but again, Dermot Lynch. A pass to Dunnadoan, two footballers again, right? But Dunnadoan, even look, 65 metres out, straight over the back spot. 
Yeah, two swivels again there, right over the bar. Uh, may we make it that maybe three points from play. Look at that, Tobin. He's been brilliant in the corner. Another opportunity, and there you go again. Juan over there again, looking to pick it back. And he has got it back here, out here. They need to have a look around, start the attack. Tobin has it that time. He's gone high, he's gone big again. And the umpire's in a good position, but it's just gone um, to the left there and wide. Uh, plenty uh, plenty juice in that. Maybe uh, too high. Yeah, Tobin started the second half just like he started the first half. He's a live wire. Does he set up on a and Dermot Lynch there for the previous one as well and uh, Dunna involved in that attack as well Cork's forward line I think have the measure of Limerick's back line Yes um, the Limerick goalkeeper we can see is number 16 Charles Yenham there as they start the attack with Patrick Hartigan gives it in here towards Foley again Foley will get one chance to get it up and he has it sandwiched in between the two of them he's bearing down and goes Barry Foley pull back again he just pops it there left hand side it's gone wide but it should be probably a free in Mike um, he's got a free he got a free, yeah. Uh, Aaron, he went through five or six of them there. They all had a crack off him. He put away, though. <laughs> yes, and uh, that's what happens when there was two or three fellas hanging in the back of you there. They don't always go over the bar. It wasn't an inch given there making fellas. And in fellas, he was a powerhouse. He, it looked like he didn't even see him. as like swatting flies off, Mick. Yes, uh, Barry went straight through there um, and he's gonna he engineered that free himself and out here again. And this is it, it's going it's gonna be kept going, they're gonna be kept in it. There's nothing much gonna change here, and it's all about our free taking, and that's what they're doing best at uh, Limerick at the moment, and Cork giving away needless frees. But maybe that was the right time to get a free away there, uh, Mike, to be fair, because uh, the way he was motoring the other was only wanting in his mind. Ah uh, yeah, he was heading he was bearing down on goal, you know. I think maybe the Cork backs are just a little bit too eager, maybe, you know. Wait for the fella to throw the ball up and then hook him, you know. Here we go now, puck out to Dermot Lynch and here we go again. Lynch starts the attack ball over here against to Duane again. He turns again like that, but it's just gone um, to the left and wide. The umpires were a bit dodgy about that. One of them looked over to the yeah, other. I was wondering if Dunn's look was going to run over because he's not looking at the post at all. He's getting the ball was back to the post, turning on a hit it, and he's, he's gone over most of the time. Yeah, not a good opportunity, but you can't fault that man. He's been absolutely brilliant on the 40 Africa up there. Look at that for a solid and goes up there. Um, just as well, he the glove on that time. Gary has it outside there. Nice ball. Oh, they get uh, O'Neill was lucky there, but he's got it. He's got back in again around him. O'Neill has a chance here. He's coming in towards goal. Ed O'Neill has a chance to pop it, but uh, it's uh, got caught for travelling. And uh, Bernard Akeon and got back in as well. Might have done enough. Yeah, he did. Kiernan got caught there, he came out and his pace was exposed. But this guy O'Neill at full forward, as they say, as we would say in Nolan terms, he's got a bit of a gatch in him, like I'd say he's going to throw himself around, you know. Joe Mulcahy has it over on the other side. Look at that for a pass from Joe to Hartigan out here again as they start the attack over here. Limerick now turning the screw a bit here. Super ball there by Tommy Maloney. Tommy's trying to get it up in the stick, but he can't. But Cork are coming in around him. Tobin was there as well. But Lynch, the man from Belly Giblin and North Cork has come out of about 30 years solid with Belly Giblin back over here again. Here we go again. Doan has it again on the 40 over the shoulder again. In towards the danger area. And this is the big one inside there. The referee, he's given. Yes, that's uh, that was awkward inside there, uh, Mike and uh, that is a free in we, we get it for a bit dragging it down there he could be a penalty here mate because he looked like he was inside in the square like he he was well inside in the square you'd say it has to be a penalty Dennis Moran is in there um, and having a look around so we'll see yes he's given a penalty so uh, Moran was the man that caused it so very, very uh, similar players now in both full forward lines um, for Limerick and uh, Cork uh, Moran and O'Neill absolutely high ball in there and Moran did well showed a physical presence and broke down the ball and was clearly full with the full back we got a penalty here now. Who's taking the penalty? I think Donald one is shaping up to take his penalty, that's it. And any yeah. more changes, John? Yeah, number 27 there. Um, Sean Buckley is in as well. I'm not sure who went off, Mick. They were made at half time. But Sean Buckley from Carrie Tool is in as well, Mick. Sean Buckley is in again. Of course, football at the Huller also. Yeah, yeah. And Shawnee is in the extended panel this year. He did cornerback, wing back. Here we have the penalty now from uh, Fundona. Here we go, uh, Duane has it here. He knows what he has to do. Anything he bounces off the ground here will, will be like 100 miles an hour. But will he rifle it off the ground? He does. He, he gives the keeper a chance. Oh, but it's got into the back of the net for Cork. And that is Sean Buckley is the jolly on the spot. He was waiting for it. Uh, Mike, uh, the penalty was just perfectly tight for him. But uh, the keeper couldn't do much about it. But Buckley knew where to be. Yeah, I was surprised Donna didn't play it into the ground. With the hard ground, he didn't play it into the ground. He did the same with the shot in the first half. But Shawnee Box was in the right place and put away the goal. That will um, Shani Buckley a few votes in the future there's no doubt about it as we're back over on the other side of the field Carlo Regan has it over here but Limerick trying to come out at that time and now Cork getting an extra gear and now they're earning the freeze because to be fair they haven't had much uh, freeze 
No, Cork haven't had much freeze, but they've been clean on the ball. I notice as well Limerick have Barry Foley coming out around centre forward now because they're kind of playing maybe somewhat against the wind and up the hill a bit maybe and they probably want to get him on the ball more in general play. Free free here now again and don't know who's turning out to be the star of the show here today. Has a free what, 60 metres out. Yes, so here we go. He's a long way out here. Um, referee will be keeping an eye on him here now that he doesn't uh, come forward too much in this. He's have the ref was glued to him at the moment. So let's see what happens here. He's been absolutely brilliant to Anne and he's had another pot shot at this. And the umpire is just waving that uh, to the right here. And why, uh, John, uh, that was, I suppose, it was too easy for him to end, considering all the other ones he got. Yeah, he seems to be scoring a very difficult one, making missing kind of the handy ones. But fellas, you can't fault him a couple of ways, but he's been unbelievable today. In fairness, his shooting from open play has been unbelievable, and he's just everywhere, Mick. Yes, uh, Torben started off the brightest with fi for the first 15 minutes, but Dindouan had to can grab that right alongside us there. Starts the attack here for Limerick. Foley's got in behind. He nudges it away again. Here we go. Chance. Oh, up. He flicks it up. Coming in now about 21 out. Angle. Foley still tries to pop it, and he'll get a free in there. And there was just a block down. Maybe all he can say is he blocked down his arms. I'm not sure what the free was for there. The block down looked fair, unless there was a tug of the jersey or something before it. But, um... Uh, Barry Foley's getting into general play now, which he was, wasn't in the first half, and that's a bit of a concern for Cork, you know. But I, I still would have faith in Aidan Cork, he, he plays centre back in the football team. He's sticky and he's hard, you know. And, and like a corner forward like Barry Foley, that's the one type of player you don't want on you. It's a sticky, fast, hard. The classic dirty cornerback, you know. Well, I suppose, Mike, you don't want a man that has played about eight or ten years senior with um, Limerick either on you, you know. Oh, yeah. so. If you want to make an age <laughs> yourself, that's what you got to do. Yeah, so um, he has the medals to show for it. He's played in the big stadiums, John, and, you know, that's what it comes down to. And that's um, no fault of anyone that was going to be marked. I'd say everyone could be in trouble if they ran Barry. Oh, definitely, Mick. And in fairness, he's coming right into the game from open play. And in the second half, he hadn't much in open play in the first half. But since they moved him out, he seems to be on the ball. And in fairness to him, he's able to move as well, Mick. The one starts the attack again there, but intercepted as Cork trying to get. Was that another little drag down over there? You can't see. Number 27, Buckley was trying to get that. A little swipe again there, but Duane has it again over in the corner here this time. He'll get one touch, it's up, and he has it. He'll be coming, try to come back around him. Was that a drag down? I think it was, Mike, and uh, he's engineered another free again. Just out in the sideline here. There's not easy about it, but um, he's the standout performer. The man of the match is pretty easy. No, yeah, he's, he's getting on the ball, and sure, that's the key, like, he can get on the ball. At He's, he's clearly able to handle it, so he has another free here. Wait, it's getting a little bit spicy here now. Limerick are it's getting a bit niggly because I think they're probably feeling the cork are slightly getting the upper hand, you know. He has a free now from Dunna. Yes, here we go. Yeah, that was uh, Sean Buckley just getting to know um, to see was his shoulder working and it was working and fine. So here we go over here. Duane has it again that time. I see our own Cody last week as well, testing both shoulders for the championship. But he just strikes that a bit. Will he get away with it that time? And he has. He just leaned forward, but um, he directed himself well back and it's just gone over the bar again. And Cocker uh, motoring here now towards a, a point lead again. But how, uh, when you look at this and you just, it, we know the freeze have kept Limerick in this, but I bet maybe uh, about Mike, if you'd given away maybe five or six frees in the first half, you'd be still looking at a seven point cushion, but we've given away far, far too many. Absolutely, and uh, I just wonder when it's going to end. We talked about it at half time there, and like, but have they got three points already in the second half from freeze? Um, there are a few substitutes there now. So we're ringing the changes here. Number 22 here is in. You can see him over here. He's been in there with a bit, but uh, Kieran Maloney just swapping over wings. John, have you anyone else who's in? Number 21 is in there. Owen Green from Canakilty is in for Cork as well, Mick. Okay, so the changes are happening, ticking fast. Keep an eye out there, Limerick. Um, still hanging in the balance here. They've done well to stay in the game. Cork have been the better side, there's no doubt about that. But uh, Limerick seem to know what they're doing. They know how to perform. Number 15 for Limerick, uh, Mikey Dillon is out around midfield. So the changes and swapping all over the place is still happening. Referee is uh, talking over there, so he'll be having um, a little word here to one or two players and just seeing if they are okay. So everyone seems good and the changes that we're seeing for substitutions that's needed, John. Yeah, I definitely need it, Mick. And would you believe it? It's, it's the old cliche, like, subs win the games. And in fairness, all the subs that have come in, Cork, two subs, have won one the penalty and one scored the rebound from the penalty. So you have to say, a tactical masterclass so far. Yeah, certainly. So the changes have been ringing around. And no surprise here. We'll try to keep you with um, the time as well on this. So we have a 2.12 to 15 so far. 2.12 to 15 so far. And... Um, it's at 2.50 here, 
So here we go. We'll just have a look here, John. What do you make it here? I'm um, lifting this just to keep it because we don't have uh, the time up on the screen for the window chewing in later. I suppose Mick does about 10 minutes gone in the second half, but I, we have had a lengthy stoppage here now. So I suppose if you take the stoppage off, I suppose you have about 17 minutes to go, Mick. Um, or no, 23 minutes to go, Mick, I'd be thinking. But it could be longer. We, we just don't know. As I say, we have no time clock, but I'd be saying there's around 10 minutes gone, Mick. Yes, uh, Mike, um, it's been a pretty, pretty uh, good game, to be fair. You have to be, you have to be really happy of um, your first day out here. Look, Limerick know what they have to do in the future. And whatever happens here, win, lose, or draw, they need to add uh, points. Um, it's, clear, it's clearing to see they need to add more from play. Yeah, absolutely. But like, if they start putting more from play, it could be a different game. They could be out of sight. But um, you know, look, I think both teams, to, like if you look at it, we're 10 minutes into the second half. Both teams will certainly be happy with their outing so far. It's been good, fast hurling, clean hurling. Um, and, and hard as well, and um, like it's a good, it, it's fast pitch today, dry, dry ball, it's championship hurling at its best, you know. Um, the lengthy stoppage here now, but uh, Cork seem to be, be a bit, little bit more balanced certainly, and the forwards are working well. They're making good use of the ball. Um, with Dunne being the star of the show at the moment, and uh, Tobin as well. And uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how to how to pan out. Like you know, with all Corks play and their spread of scoring, they still have 14 scores. Limerick have 15. You know. Yes, certainly. And um, there'll be we'll see. We'll talk about this and Ian, whatever happens in here. We'll keep an eye on that. There, we had a two-time uh, Munster winner in there to say hello to Jamie Carlin from Newtown Shandrum, who's still in the tick of the action with Newtown. Of course, we see him playing last week. Back in here to the full forward line again, causing havoc inside here. Cork turning the screw here. Keen comes out and now that time takes us off the helmet. That should have been a free in, but there was no malice as they cleared their lines that time by O'Connor right over the head here. Backed in there, pressing down again. Some super play over here by Maloney from Limerick trying to get it here and they're doing their best to turn the screw we can see number 10 is back in again for Limerick back Cork but Cork coming out with the attack and intercepted as well by Gavi Gavi could be hooked and he isn't hooked but it's gone in around Tess Walsh inside here this is what we're saying to be that looked another penalty there but was it the referee was having a look at it but I suppose he didn't deliberately do it John he was just um, he was just in the way to be honest Mick he probably got away with one there he definitely caught his leg I know it was, wasn't intentional but it probably was a penalty Mick yeah it could have been I thought so Mike but uh, Owen Green now is in uh, for Cork number 21 so a change is happening there I think uh, the referee probably has just given that out of uh, just the justice system yeah I'd say justice system there because it was probably a penalty but he was probably just a bit too far away and it looked like a tussle to him but it did look like he caught his leg Mick but look the ref was having a good game so far and you can't fault him yeah, here we go again, Foley. We know where this is going here. And as Mike pointed out here, if this goes over, this is their 16 points. So it's still savage, savage scoring. It might um, be a lot of them uh, from freeze. But here we go, Foley again, right in front of the post. Uh, Kieran Welch puts up uh, the hurley and that just tells you straight that's gone over the bar. We have over here number 10 alongside us. On the other side is uh, Kieran Corton. Needs to see a bit more. Very similar to uh, Dave Moher in the first half. Yeah. Uh, hadn't seen much. No, he's physical, though. He's having a physical battle with his man there. Um... There's a few niggles going on here with the Limerick backs. I think they've probably got a bit of a gene up at half time because they were exposed a bit in the first half, you know. Yeah, so here we go. Um, the referee is his hand up. The change is happening. Um, looking for fast puck outs here. Aidan Cockery, number two, is out a long way here. Looking for uh, the ball. He's playing out in the wing back line now, but that's what we're saying. If you're watching in here later, it doesn't matter what number you have. Dinny, he has it now from Belly here. And now Cock right in towards the danger area again. This is what Cock were doing well here. They need to pick it up again if they can. But Akeem comes out with it that time. Nice little ball over here to Grimes. will start the attack for Limerick. Over on the other side again. Knocked down here in the middle of the park. It's been snappy snappy. This is Probably the best one now so far here. Again, as they pick it up, Keane again will start the attack here. Over, our referee just calls it. There has been just a little um, wallop into the hands there again. There's been a lot of stopping now, Mike, to be fair. Yeah, it's stop-start at the moment. Um, I think Limerick backs are not holding back. They're just they're pulling on everything that moves at the moment. Um, the ref has been fairly lenient, I would have thought, you know. Uh, you might think they have all the frees that Limerick have gotten. Like, to me, Limerick are playing more physical than Cork, but yet, does Limerick seem to be getting all the frees? Um, yeah, who's, like, the Cork, the new, who's the new Cork full forward there, the number 19? Dennis Moore, and he caused the penalty for um, Duane that had missed it, and Buckley he, didn't rifle it in. He's a big presence in there he's a tall man and the fullback is worried about him you know and 
I'd kind of somewhere I'd kind of like to see Tobin back in and around there again, picking up breaks off him because the ball is breaking off him, you know. It's a bit like the Cork senior hurlers this year, banging it into Hayes and, and Alan Connolly. You know, the lads around him picked up a lot of breaks and I think Cork will get change out of that here, you know. Yes, and uh, Tobin, to be fair, would have done it, and they have been absolutely brilliant, John. Anyone else sticking out for you while um, we have a break in play here? Me, I actually think Dermot Lynch is doing very well here in the second half wing back. And I have to say, the belly here man, um, Stephen Dinehy, I think he's sent out his delivery of the ball. He's catching out of the air. It's been supreme. And you'd know, like, from belly here, so it's a pure hurling club. He hasn't lasted anyway, Mick. Yes, of course, some legends in that club. Neil Ronan, Darren Ronan, down through the years, been brilliant servants for Cork. John, they were the times um, when we were lucky enough uh, to see Cork doing well. Now they're back now again, but look, the stranglehold to win an all Ireland is still there. It's like um, we weren't in a final now. It just goes back to zero and we're starting off again. Yeah, like it's just big. Yeah, if they could win one with this team, because it's a young team, you could probably see them being there for a while, but they need to just get over the line and win one. Because as we all know, if you don't take your chances, they don't come around every year. Yes, Mike, as we were speaking there about Neil Ronan, he was a great servant uh, to Cork. Um, players like that are hard to come by now. And what I mean, we still have a good full forward line, but players for the big day. Oh, yeah, yeah. I played against him back in the day um, with Carrie Down, um, great hurler. Uh, yeah, look, I think Cork did well this year, but like when you go back and look at the margins, right? We could have been beaten by Limerick below in the park, <laughs> and you know it could have been a totally different year, you know. And and like Limerick could have got a few points too in the semi-final. We're back going here now again. We're going here. We'll have a little warm chat there before we go when we close out this um, program here as they're starting the attack. Yeah, Maloney has it for Limerick. Now he's in and goals. He just dropped it at a critical time, but Lynch has picked it up again. As John pointed out there to you, he's been one of the standout performance. Of course, um, John, look. Let's be honest about it. Um, we expected nothing else from him over here that time. And they're trying to win it again. Cork Cockery was over there. He has it. And he's got the clearance in here. But back over here is towards uh, Keane. Keane will have a chance here to scan the area and have a look. And he does. He launches it right down on top of him again. Of course, there was only one man he was looking to get it inside. But he couldn't. And Foley was in behind him there. But back Cork and knocks it out. And Foley are over the side end. And there's that whistle gone again. Is that another free mic? I think he may have blown for it. could well be. Uh, but um, I, I concur with Jordan there Dermot Lynch is reading the game very well he's, he, he, he's done a bit of sweeping in the football and he's sweeping very well there he's picking up ball and his, his distribution is good as well you know so I think definitely the football spine is certainly helping Cork you know um, Collie Sullivan there is battling away in midfield as well um, he's got an unusual style he jumped up for a ball there with his hand and no hurley protection at all as you said he was lucky he was holding the glove you know as here we go at that time, uh, Foley is wide there, but it was um, nothing easy about that over. The breeze had just picked up again here. As we look at the score, about 212 to 16 points, 16 points for Limerick. And the attack here is on over here again for Carr. But uh, Keane has picked up a lot of ball now in the second half. Lovely interception there over by Tobin. Mike pointed out we need to see him more. That's a free. Mike, there you go. He's on the ball. He engineered the free for uh, Duane to bury this one over the bar again. And we need to see him on more. Absolutely. Like, one thing that makes a difference at Masters hurling our football is a bit of pace and if you've got a bit of pace and you're able to handle the ball and so Tobin clearly has both right and there there was a break he's on to it and here we have a free again one thing to point out there the, the, the Dunn has gone out of the game a bit and the Limerick centre back is after clearing the last three balls there so we need to look at that at the moment and because he, any attack, he's snuffing out any Cork attack reasonably easy there in the last, last five minutes Yes, there's a yellow card been handed out, but if you've uh, joined us and you can see the crowd here, because we're off on the other side here and count to the sun blaring in, but um, you could easily say there's 500 people here now, it's um, gathering and gathering more as over here on the other side. Of course, it's free and free here, so there's no worries about that, as the one has a chance here now to launch it over the bar, but it's just gone wide that time. And uh, we see here there's one or two switches here going around. Alan Barry's over here alongside us on the right. He's picking up number 15, Mikey Dillon. So Mikey Dillon's out around the middle of the park. Cork just needs to be a bit wise here now, 2-12 out of 16 points, and that's uh, all to play for here, this could go anyway, another goal here could be critical as well, around the middle of the pair we might get a bit of flow to it now, that time as Tobin has it on the other side of the pitch again 15 in the jersey, white helmet down the left hand side, he's out on the side and he's going to have to do it in the run, he does, and if that one went over Mike, we'd be talking about one of the points of the game. Absolutely, he's after bursting into the game in the last 5 minutes, he went into the goalkeeper that time now, he was half hooped here we go again now, 
So over here, just batted down the middle of the park again as Cork trying to start the attack with Pat O'Connor and it's bubbling in around the area. There's a lot of substitute jerseys coming in there. You know, Owen Green is in there. There's a lot of swiping second ball. It's all about picking up this one, but Buckley now is going to pop it over here there like very well, like pitch and putt by him that time. Over again, nice little swivel around here that time by Corton. Corton now has a chance here now. He might survive the hook, but it's blocked down here. Limery coming out again. He was on his mind. You could see it as they start the attack here, Limery. Nice little side set by O'Connor. Yellow helmet. He needs to do it right, but they get away with it. He gets it back, so they're looking to clear up the lines, but it's just gone out over the sideline here to us. And uh, Cork are pushing him in. They're pinning him back, Mike. And uh, they, even though this game is tight, they look like they're giving it their all. And they look like the fitness, as you said, they are standing. Yeah, it's like Cork were out of the game there for maybe five minutes, but they seem to be coming back into it now again. It's a good ball. Oh. Nearly intercepted by Foley, but a chance here in the middle of the park now that time. He's got a big effort here. Let's see where it's a go straight over the bar. And that is a super point by Stephen Dennehy from Bally here. John, we we know all about Stephen, St. Colman's College, All Ireland winner, Hearty Cup winner. And look, when you were with a dinner ring and coincide there, you were on that team uh, for a reason. Yes, Mick, and he's very good holder, Mick. And being honest, Mick, it's a huge score for Cork because we've probably gone 10 or 12 minutes without a score. We needed that to set us down. We're back three in front now. Three could be a big lead in this game, Mick. Yes, super a point there by Dinahy. And Mike, and we were talking about using the breeze, and that's how you use it. Absolutely, and it looks like the breeze is coming down the field now again. You know, it, it, it's blustery, and Cork now, like, it, Cork have come back into the game nicely. And if they could tack on a few points now, it could just maybe take it away from them, Rick, you know. But it's a good way to go, yeah. Yeah, a long way to go here. Anything could happen now. But Cork are turning the screw. Dewan is the man that's in the middle of it. Another shot there. Make that about 65 in. Towards Amor and again inside. Oh, what a piece of skill inside the corner by Thomas McInerney. He gets it out here as Limerick coming on the attack there. But they're missing out. They need to be careful. They're dropping the crucial ball now as Keen will start the attack here for Limerick. On the other side of the pitch, he'll have a look in the area. Here we go in for the second ball now for Limerick. They need to do it. Foley has it again. That looked a free in. And it is a free in. Um, we can't seem to do nothing with him. As he said, he's coming more into the game, showing for the ball in general play now. Um, he looks at the real, real deal. Absolutely, yeah. Won that ball well. Three cock players around him. Got his free. And there's a, a little bit of handbags going on in there now. Uh, which will probably suit Cork more than Limerick at this stage. And uh, I assume now Barry will be popping this over the bar again. And so it is a tight game then again. Yeah, so here we go, John. Two, 13 to 16 points. So that's 19 uh, 16, a three point lead for Cork, but that's going to be coming to two points here. And um, John, any more changes? Yeah, number 24 for Joe Mulca. He's after coming on to the Limerick team there. I think it's his second time on and off, but they're switching it up and they're using the bench really well, Mick. Yes, yeah, Sam, of course, uh, they're using the Khalidi men like Tyrone used the great Peter Canavan. Joe's back in the action again, and here we go over. Cork now need to slow things down. Just have a look around. They are in control. It's only two points, but if you're watching it here with us, Cork, they, they, do, they seem to be doing a bit more, Mike. Um, and look, we don't want to put um, we don't want to say it because it could go anywhere, yeah. but they do look in a bit more in control. Yeah, I think right through the game, Cork have been bubbling away in reasonable control, but... You know, Limerick have got no goal yet, and it, if Limerick had a goal, to be interested to see how Cork would respond, you know. Um, if his team isn't together, you don't know how fellas would respond in those type of scenarios, but um, they're definitely more balanced. They're getting, they have a bigger spread of scores from a bigger number of players. They were off now again, Jim the ball again. So here we go, and that is another free inside here, that in the corner, another substitution here we have in uh, John Rollis through that. Damien Grimmins is in there for... Bernard Cairn and he's gone in full back. He's actually down here as a Glen Room man, so he obviously was living in Cork, so there'll be definitely a bit of bite in him when he comes in here because he won't want to lose to Limerick. John, the geography is going well with you, thank you for that. And we'll have a look here as uh, Barry Foley has it out in the sideline again. A uh, time is ticking away here nicely. The game hasn't flown like we wanted to do, but look, um, we can't fault down the referee here in this one. Uh, we feel there was a lot of these uh, were frees and their Foley just strikes it a bit. He was tailing a bit more. And let's see, that has gone over the bar again Same and the umpires up. doing the job again. And that is uh, 19 points there. We're having a look to two top. So we're just waiting. We're just waiting here. We think that's wrong, John. Is that wrong? I, I think it should be 18 points. Yeah. 
OK, so let's uh, we'll roll with the dice there and we'll see what will happen here. We we'll need to get uh, that sorted. Number 17 is in there for uh, Limerick and that is uh, Tony Doyle and he is from the St. Kieran's Club. But uh, Cork need to respond here. A uh, scoreboard we think is wrong if you're looking at it there. But um, look, let's hope it doesn't come down to that here as Cork restarts the attack here. They have it over here on the other side. Pat O'Connor, Newtown Shandrum launches it right into the full forward line. Moran will be looking for the hand of God and uh, he brings it down again. Need to get the second ball. But out come Limerick this time. They look more solid here and uh, swinging the ball here's just gone in around the box here oh to one it's gone into the back of the net he was the jolly he was waiting Mike as you said he was gone out for about five minutes but he stole it around the back like the great Jody used to and seals a lovely goal into the bottom corner and you were just about to say that the Limerick back line were, were, were better at getting the ball out and they lost it done a cost it turned swivelled and this time he hit it into the ground into the back of the net and that's a crucial goal for Cork that's a big, big goal here. That is three, 13 to 19 points. John Am, um, Doan was waiting for it there. And you see that, and there was no mistake there. He was sneaking around the back post, and that was uh, some finish. No, there was no mistake there, Mick. And the way he hit that is the way we were saying about the penalty. He hit it straight into the ground. Once it bounces on that ground inside the underturf, no Gil Keeper has a chance unless he happens to drive and happens to hit off him. Super finish into the corner, Mick. So here you go, he's going to have another shot at this right out in the sideline again. Cork turning the screw here in Newtown Chandram. Stay with us after the end of this and um, we'll pick up uh, one or two interviews and uh, we'll close out with Mike and John here and we'll have a few words on a couple of our Masters legends that we may have heard that could be joining in the future. You'd never know all about that but referee is uh, talking over here as uh, Duane has it. He's a long way out. Make that 80 metres out and make that. Look at the umpire waving that and uh, I hope they're talking to each other because uh, it was the umpire here that we see on the left was waving it over but uh, the other umpire was right down in his knees there Mike yeah like the, you know there's a saying a fella's in the zone there's no doubt about it but Donald Dwan's in the zone today Oh, certainly um, brilliant ball. I've just going to pass Keane here as Limerick. They're finally a bit haptic and has it now. He'll need to go back again. Uh, substitutions all over the place for Cork. Not a free there again. Number 25 for Cork is in. Owen Sweeney from Belly Free Hand. Lots of changes, John. That's on the way to go as well because um, legs now getting tired. My legs must be getting tired because this has been prepared at a ferocious pace. The second half has slowed down a small bit, but the first half was played at a pace. It couldn't keep going at that pace. I must say, very enjoyable game of hurling, Mick. Can't fault the effort, can't fault the scores. It's been brilliant to watch. Yeah, it's over here again, and uh, they're looking to keep it in that time, but it's gone wide here. And the breeze, the more the sun has gone in, the breeze has come in favour more now of Cork. And it's an uphill uh, challenge uh, for Limerick, to be fair. But uh, they're digging in, and when they have Foley inside their mic, a goal is possible. Absolutely, yeah, a goal. To be fair, they haven't threatened the Cork goal at all today, but um, no, no, look, it's, it's the Limerick centre back now under this again. Paddy Reel is in uh, for Limerick number 18 as Moran for Cork is on the ball he's just gone down over that could be a free out as well he could have been looking uh, to get away with it Sean Buckley is in there the man who's got a beautiful goal a big big goal as Mike Keane has dragged down how big was uh, Buckley's goal I know that Duane had a good one as well but Buckley's came the right time oh, I'd say that'll suit him for running in the local elections next time around he'll get a few more votes but he's in the right place at the right time and we all know it hurling and all the skill oh, here, we here we go Foley out in the sideline again and the umpire is uh, waving that why there that time they had a look at each other again but Mike um, the local elections uh, he certainly if he gets two terms he'll be sorted <laughs> he'll be sorted yeah but look we know about hurling like it's being able to read the game and hurling is just important as a skill you know and Sean is in the right place at the right time to pop away that goal Moran is over there on the sideline he's about 6 foot 5 just gets blocked down with Keane uh, to be fair I've been impressed with that Keane uh, for Limerick number 6 he's been absolutely brilliant Sean. yeah he's been very good and being honest Mickey seems to be everywhere on the second half but in fairness Cock full forward line they're working very hard to try and keep the ball in there and Limerick are getting no too easy either and there you go and that's uh, Mikey Keane launches it out number 6 and he's back as we just said to you there uh, an outstanding performance by him as Cock come to the attack again and uh, right ball over here again but it's there again by Keane he has it he launches it in towards the area again but a uh, brilliant play again here as Dini he was inside looking for the second ball and that is a uh, free out there and it's becoming hard down for Cork it is but um, yeah Keane the Limerick centre back there has given an outstanding display in the second half even though like Dunna has played well as well it was just interesting that he cleared that ball from the centre back but just Dunna caught it up then in the, up in our half back line you know um, but like, no standing game of hurling uh, oh, standing game of hurling it'd be interesting what people's views are what level the standard is you know like you know junior B junior A lower grade intermediate you know uh, where it pitches in but there's 
like the, the, as no, very few stupid shots, very low wide count. There we go again. Now. And Kieran Welch with an incredible drive, and he has got his Cork Masters career up intact, and that is a beautiful score from the man from Kilwat to Narka. John, as you said, you've seen it all before. Yeah, I was I was expecting nothing else actually, Mick. He done it to our own club a couple of times when we played against him at the, during the junior year, and in fairness, I was expecting him to get it, and he had a lot to spare, Mick. There's probably another 15 yards in it. There you go, experience tells the tale there and that's what's used it expertly there as we said at the breeze now, Corker are getting to uh, terms with that, O'Connell launches the attack here as they try to pick it up, they move out, Doherty is captain, fantastic here from a hand, trying to get it in there but he can't as uh, Moran is in there looking for, but out comes Mikey Keane again, he's been some operator to be fair, he's been uh, their best player all over and um, he's been... Probably Marshall, as you said there, Duan has been brilliant as well, but to two of them, it has been an outstanding performance by both. As they start over here again that time, on the attack here, Limerick, the ball in deep into the corner that time, and that was from Niall. We'll have a look here, so he can get it out first here. He's just got it out here that time, over to Corton. Corton will change styles here. He'll start the attack here now, he'll be looking to get two Limerick men around, a nice little pop down, Ben O'Connor will be happy with that. Oh, and there you go from Corton, a long way out again, and the umpire is singing that over the bar. Ben Connor and Kieran Carton very, very alike there. Nice little pop down and right over the back. That's coming close to score today because he had a lot of hard work to do and then had the intelligence to bounce it so he could catch it. Never panicked. Great score, Mick. As any player would be proud of that one. Oh yeah, certainly a great score, Mike. Um, he had to pop it down to get it back, and uh, he put it right over the bars. The referee is trying to let uh, things uh, flow, but it's hard maybe to keep it flowing, Mike, because um, there has been freeze, there has been good scores. To be fair, the, the standard of scoring. Uh, look, we don't want to say what level it is, but I think it's uh, pretty high standard scoring wise, and fitness has been good. Absolutely. Look, look, look at the scoreboard: three sixteen to eighteen or nineteen points, whichever it is. That's phenomenal scoring. Um, you know, at any level, at any level, that's great. But it's a super score there by, what's his name again, the Cork wing forward? Corkton. Corkton, right? You know, it's a classic half forward score. Won a dirty ball, shook his men off and threw over the bar. Buckley just fouls Keane over on the other side, so then it's goals that they need now, there's no doubt about it. And it's just getting away from Limerick here. And we don't make it uh, much time left here either. 316 out to 19 points here in Newtown Chandram. So let's see here the ball into the box here. They need to turn the screw now, uh, Limerick. They need a goal. Let's see what happens here. And of course, Sam, um, there's been many, many more Masters games on through the weeks again over on the side. Then again, ball coming back. This is what we're saying. They need a goal. And here's the first chance here this time it's just going to be picked up there and just cleared out the lines and of course uh, Tipperary as well in it here but that time uh, Garvey has it here uh, he's given the hand pass out here some start here this time from Kelleher and Kelleher tries to swipe it um, it's just gone out wide and um, I'm hearing as well uh, the Tipperary team that is going to line out Mike is something else Lar Corbett Reds or Grady Eamon Cochran and Co there's uh, a wealth of talent the Duns are there Mike I think um, it's the World Cup Reds are going for <laughs> That's some bunch of stars, all right, back in the day. But look, you know, Masters isn't all about what you did in the past either, you know. Uh, it's about being fit now. They, like, you take Nick Murphy with us last year, he was unfit, you know. And this year he's got fitter and he's back to himself this year, you know. So I suppose, what did Brian Clough say? You know, we had a great team on paper, but the game is played on grass, you know, and you could have the same thing here. Exactly, and that, and that could be it. You'd never know, but... Um, We'll see um, a few maybe uh, Tipperary in the coming. I think there's a Galway they get underway. And is it the first of um, September? Is that um, John Duvalway? Is that uh, Until tomorrow? tomorrow week, yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's been a long week for me there, and I'm wondering what I was doing for the last seven days. But I can tell you certainly now what I was doing. I was in Kilkenny, Tipperary, Waterford. I was at work for three days, three nights, and another two days onto that. So there, and now we're here in Newtown Chandram. So it's been a busy, busy um, week. But of course, uh, Kilkenny is the place where I love going, and uh, that's where um, the real, real top uh, hauling is. It's the best hauling championship in Ireland, and there's no question about that. And uh, you see that uh, last year when you see the club final that was on Thomas Town and all Auckland Gales back in action here and that's uh, Duane again and he launched that over the bar uh, John he's been brilliant to be fair yeah, to yeah. Donna and he's been you know you couldn't fault him the goal as well with uh, Buckley and probably sealed the game for Cork yeah big score the goal and now there's just full time Mick, but you have to give first credit to both teams a great game to watch and a great game and there was in the yard given there was good physical belts in it and every one of them could take them Mick ok so we're going to go on pitch side I want you to get man of the match done at Duane I want you to get um, Brian Tobin if you can and Kieran Welch and see where they join us so we're just going to move ourselves in here 
So thanks to uh, Martin on camera there, and we'll just um, pick up uh, one or two interviews here, and we'll see if we can get uh, Sean as well and Mike and John to uh, close us out here. And it's been a convincing win here for Cork in the end, but um, Limerick um, stayed they stayed in it for a long time, 317 to 19 points, as Mike uh, Brady pointed out. It is a big scoreline um, when you're looking back. And that's an incredible job here. So John is going to pick up the interviews. We'll stay over here for the range, yeah. As John and uh, Mike are trying to pick up as uh, both teams will be getting their full team photo also. So it's been um, a br brilliant day out. No injuries, that is the key here. We can see local reporter uh, Paddy Ryan. And, uh, it's good to see that um, reporting will be on the Avenue local paper around uh, the North Cork area. So credit. You'll see that next Thursday. So we're going to get, um, we'll have Cork goalkeeper coming in here. <coughs> so we'll see here, and we won't keep him much longer now, because uh, these lads will have, they all want to go home and drink water. There'll be no pub for them, there's certainly not. They'll be uh, heading home. Uh, hello and welcome back here to Newtown. Uh, Cork run out, uh, convincing winners in the end, but Limerick uh, put it up them for a long ways. I suppose uh, Mikey, free taking, kept in it in a long, for a long time, but um, look, it's the first game out, it was a super scoreline. Yeah, I suppose we didn't really know what to expect coming down here. We were playing junior teams all along, and uh, it, was, it was a fitness game, but we, we came up against very good hurlers there today. And, and we were relying on Barry Foley as usual there for, for the freeze. But uh, in fairness, he kept, kept us in it. Yeah. yeah, we said to Barry there, it didn't matter who was marking him. You know, a Munster winner with uh, Limerick, anyone could be marking him and they'd be having a bad day. Yeah, it's like the man has played in an All-Ireland final. Like, he's, he's played senior hurling for probably 25, yeah, I suppose 25 years. Like, so 
we, we can always rely on Barry yeah, yeah. certainly Mikey great game and we'll see you again we leave you off Brian at Tobin Kilbert here just a neighbour of mine over the road lads if I didn't bring you in there could be murder over this um, Brian uh, rolling back to years I think you're hurling better now than uh, with Cork and Kilbert are you? well it seems to be I can't remember the last time I scored a goal a goal in, in club hurling to be honest but um, yeah look I suppose we're the we're, we're the same as, as Mike there, you know, Limerick. We didn't know what to expect coming this evening. You know, we, I think we got together about three times over the last few weeks and, and we heard we heard, heard, heard rumours that Limerick were doing fierce training so, and, uh, you know, former county players and we didn't know what to expect. So, look, we're delighted to come out this evening and, and, and get over the first game. With a win. Yeah, Brian, all jokes aside, you picked up some nice scores and you nipped in there for a quick goal as well and nice over the bar. So, um, you engineered a few freezes as well, so you were going well, really? Yeah, again, I suppose the position of corner forward, I, it's probably 25 or more years since I played in that position uh, with clubs. So, look, it was it was a bit of a change this evening. But, look, I suppose, look, the, the good weather, the, the hard pitch, the bounce of the ball is, you know, helps. And, um, yeah, look, just... I suppose the first one fell nicely and it was a good start to uh, start of the goal. Yeah, super performance. We'll see you again. Thank you, sir. Right. Mikey, uh, great. Yeah, just face over here the camera. Uh, super game by you. Picked up a load of ball in the back line there. But um, as we said there, Freeze kept you in it for a long time, but it's the first game out and uh, you can take a lot out of it. It's a big score line, as we said there, and that's uh, some scoring, really. Yeah, it is. I suppose it's a different level for some players there. They've never played county and, and getting their first chance, I suppose. The only, the only requirement for this game is you need to be over 40 and willing to hold. So... Everyone that stood up there today, Ward Limiters, we pride, and if it didn't work out, it didn't work out, you know? Yeah, certainly, um, you give it your all. Cork couldn't shake you off, to be fair. Um, you kept going until the, you know, the last minute. A couple of dubious decisions there. They got a penalty there that John Perr kind of changed his mind after he gave it, but other than that, it would have been a closer game, I don't think, if they got that. But look, it, it is what it is. Cork are very good, very skillful hurlers. They could find a man in space the whole time, just he picking off nice, handy points. They kind of make an easier to do in fairness. <laughs> yeah, you should have got a penalty as well there on the second half. But look, uh, just training wise, how many nights a week are you at it? You can't train it over for us. You can't. Like we, we played, we tried to, tried to get together a few junior matches. Um, I think we played one match and we lost five fizz for the next six weeks through to Henry Samstring Institute. So there was no, you couldn't train. There was no training. There's no, they have the rumours all you like, but half wise will tell you, you couldn't be out training twice a week and trying to do something at the weekend at our age. It's just a struggle to get the 60 minutes in the mind. Getting out of bed in the morning could be a bit of a problem, but look, we'll, we'll live on until next week now, because we want to enter the match, and that's it, and we'll see how it goes. I can enjoy it. Thank you, Smillian. Uh, Stephen Dinahy, Belly here. Uh, look, um, if I didn't bring this man in, Davy Rollin from Castletown Roach would oh, be on geez. to me. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve, hey, he's another fellow. We, get <laughs> we actually, might get him yeah, back. So you never know. We might get him back. Call out now, Davy. <laughs> <laughs> Steve and I'm look at uh, all Isles with Coleman's, Hapties. Um, you've been around the block with uh, Dennis Ring and Belly here with uh, Ronan and Co. Um, you know the game well, and you're outstanding today. To be fair. Uh, thanks very much. I know I enjoyed the game. No, it was uh, it was a great game. Jeez, um, the standard was a lot higher than, uh, than than you'd expect. Like for fellas over forty, like this, geez, everyone's still well able to move. Like uh, Barry Foley and their team well able to move, but Brian Tobin and our team is just incredible. Kieran and Gold Dunna gave an exhibition centre forward, but I just thought it was, it was a fantastic game, great crack as well. Yeah, you, pace wise of the game, what did you think? Was it high? We know we can say it was a, you know, real um, a nice day for it, but uh, did you find it uh, testing yourself? Yeah, like uh, the pace for it was good, like in fairness, like because like everyone's well able to hurl, so everyone can strike the ball good distances. Like so, you know, if you're standing ten yards off your man, you're going to be caught out, like because they like they can strike the ball sixty yards across the field. So and then like. You know, there's some great feeling there by, by Barry and a few more lads, like, you know, so yeah, the pace was fantastic, it was great, yeah. We are just before I leave you go, even other two legends in Belly here, Neil Ronan and uh, Darren, you might see him over here, they're, they're, they're going to be hit now after this, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Neil, Neil, Neil is golfing today, for, Neil is golfing for Clem Smith today, anyway, so this is his last, this is his last day off, anyway, so he'll, he'll have to be pulled out, anyway. Definitely. Stephen, thanks a million, we'll let you off by yeah, cheers, lad. Donna, outstanding performance. Before we start here, how, will you have enough left for next week? Oh, I, hopefully I will, yeah, but sure, look, as the lad said before, it's terribly enjoyable. No? None of us ever thought we'd get the opportunity at 40 plus years of age, we're on the Cork jersey, so I think that alone will give you the extra pep in your step, you know, going to any game. So look, we'll recover during the week now, um, we have a big week ahead of us preparing for Derry next weekend. Great, that's a great result for the dual players. It gives us, you know, good momentum going into so that's all a plus, really. Yeah, and most importantly, no injuries uh, coming out of this uh, going in there next week. No, thanks be to God, yeah. And, and it was a physical game, I can tell you. There was some good hits there at times, but that's the nature of when Cork play Limerick down the jerseys come on. So, no, as you said, thankfully, no injuries and look forward to the week. Ahead. Yeah, just speaking on your goal, um, you were waiting inside, you were waiting for the ball and uh, it fell to the right person and you rifled it in. And you kept low this time and you'd bounce it in front of him, so it worked out well. Yeah, I think I learned from the mistake from 10 minutes before that and the penalty to bounce it off the ground. No, 
no, in fairness to the lads outside, I ran in, I didn't get the first break. I said I'd wait inside for a bit of luck, and to the lads outside, just kept rocking. Rocking's a huge thing at this to try and win the rocks, and it just luckily just broke into me, and this time, like I said, I kept it low, and thankfully went into the corner. And the best of luck to you next Amen. week as well. Great game Amen. today. Kieran, we'll finish up with you. Uh, super performance by you. Back in action again, and look, the score of the game out in the side, line, 80 yard. I see uh, you Lala doing it last week uh, for a Lachlan Gales. He might have been, uh, you might have been watching, you might have seen it. Um, some score it. Ah, it's just nice, it's nice to uh, get a score like and when you put on the cocktails even things like that and look, there was a nice breeze with me and I totally kind of guided really through the post but yeah, it's always nice to score and a great, uh, great occasion like for the first time kind of as Donna said there, putting on the cocktails even when you're over 40, it's great, it's great um, and a cocktail occasion is always going to bring out the best in everyone, I think. Yeah, I've been involved with the football masters and the crack in the squad was absolutely brilliant and this is going to be the same for you. Absolutely, we've only gathered a couple of times there now and and the crack already even between the lads it's great it's great and um, there's a great bond between everyone and you could see it today everyone back everyone, everyone else up and you know it was great to kind of get over the line and get the win today yeah. brilliant delighted to meet you yeah, and we'll see you again sean pop back in here and we close out the evening's mike you'll come in when you're ready dear and john sean um it's your day it's up and running everything is motoring took a long time to shake off limerick but we didn't yeah. expect we we're going to shake him off at half time at the world around the ground no one could call at the result but um i thought throughout the game we were the better team from the start to the finish we were the better team I mean we got a, we got a dream start with a goal in, but inside the first minute and that, that kind of set us up for the rest of the day and the, we've only had a couple of outings but you could see what it meant to the Cork lads there today they fought for each other they backed each other you know they harried and hassled and the subs came on they did their job as well like they were supposed to do and you know it's, it's a fabulous start for Cork Masters hurling and it's a fabulous start for hurling for the Gaelic Masters in general like two two real hurling county teams you know giving it all even if they're over 40 and like there's some lovely scores by Limerick I mean we just couldn't shake them off until probably the last five minutes and uh, it's a great start and it's going to be a, it's a great start for the week ahead and um, we'll now turn our attention and focus on the football against Derry in the All-Ireland final next weekend and um, we'll be up against it there but we'll give it our best shot um, and all the lads are fit so you know we're all raring to go and this will be this will we'll, we'll give us more momentum going in next week when we go back to training on Tuesday and um, hopefully we'll come back down from Crow Park or not Crow Park but uh, uh, Dublin with the trophy on Saturday Speaking about Crow Park this man made a very very good point all finals maybe in the future could be there could be there, yeah, it could be there, but there's a long ways to go yet. I mean, this is this is only the start of hurling, this is the first game. I mean, there's we have five more games to go, and you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but it's, the foundations are set now, and you never know, it could be in Parky Keeve, or it could be in Turles down the road, hopefully. First of all, I have to let you know, I don't know if you see the Tipperary uh, team. They're uh, loaded with Galacticos, Galaxy of Stars, but that'll be for another day, Sean. Thanks a million, and uh, we'll see you there after. Mike, back again here. Look, um, Hurling wins the day here, there's no doubt about it. There's no need for a winner, John, there's no need for a loser here, but unfortunately it is. But um, everyone gets out of here safe and they enjoyed it and the team fought us there and now they'll go back and enjoy refreshments. Like I said, when I joined up at the Masters meeting yourself, Regan, that fella, but uh, unbelievable um, and that's what it's all about to crack. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other thing that Denise mentioning here, like both teams are going to go away happy because they both played well. Uh, they both learned a lot about each other. Uh, Corkland have a lot of preparation done, so they're really happy. But I think the thing that needs to be pointed out here was the crowd that was here today. Like it's a serious crowd for Fortuna. Just shows what sort of interest that the Masters can generate, you know. And it's not even September yet. So we bring back, I think the Masters will bring back hurling in September, you know. <laughs> Yes, we won't say too much about that. John, what did you enjoy out of it? You obviously seeing a couple of star players waxing Barry Foley and Co. there uh, for Cork, outstanding performances uh, from Dunn and Co. Um, look, uh, the standard was high. I just really enjoyed it, Mick. It was a good, tough, physical game of hurling. Like the one the yard given the scores that were scored, like the scoreline alone speaks for itself. It's 316 to 19 points. Come here, if you saw that in some inter county games, you'll be crowing about it. And the one the yard given, like there was hit put in, everyone got on without the one. A dirty stroke in the game, but there was no yard given, as you'd expect from Cock and Limerick. And like as you said, what could you take from it is, it just tells everyone when they're over 40, if you want to still play, there is a game there for you. And the standard is high, you're not coming back. There's no yard given, like you're not going to be coming back unfit. As Mike said, if you think you're just going to waltz around, you're not. You need to be fit too.
And as the two lads said, there's no need to worry about work on Mondays. That's for another day. But it's all over here in Newtown Chandrum. A cock run out. Not convincing winners, I suppose. Uh, Limerick, um, they put up a, a gallant display led by Foley and Keane. They were outstanding. But Cork with uh, Duane, uh, Welch and goals, outstanding. Tobin, brilliant. Lynch was brilliant. They had a, a real, real top performance. And many more. You, uh, Dennis uh, Moran coming on as well. Engineering uh, penalties. But um, as these Cork stay, they get off and run and they um, will hopefully um, keep going and just take away it as we said there we were talking about uh, the Tipperary side that they have that's for another day they are loaded with stars so just in case you're looking back in there's multiple there's maybe about 12, 13 All Ireland winners are playing with Tipperary. So that's just keep a think of that the next time you see t Tipperary at it. But um, they'll be at it tomorrow. But it's all over here from Newtown Chandram. Cork are the winners. And thanks to Mike and John here. And hopefully uh, we'll see you in the near future.